We're back here again. Lily won't shut her trap. And my subscribers want me to give her some crap. Siester Stream Demon is the bit old. Chat calls it cringe, but I think it's gold. They're hungry for shit talk like never before. And who am I to deny that which they call for? If I add my own voice to the jeers and the booze, guess who will be pulling all the views? <laughs> Why, hello! Salutations, my little hellions! We are back talking about Hasbin Hotel with our old pal Lily Orchard! <laughs> Whatever shall Lily's opinions be today? I hope you all enjoyed that, thank you. <laughs> I am Siester, the stream demon! Is it loud? Okay. I don't have a script this time. Hello! Hello! Okay, we're not gonna be doing the Salister bit the entire time. Hello, 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 hello. It wouldn't be one of my streams if I didn't, like, just burst all of your eardrums and have bad audio. This is, this is, this is, this is why you come here. This is why you come here. <laughs> yeah, I figured, um, I figured I'd just get the, the Switcheroo comic all finished up, and we'd just have a pure React stream today. I realized I wasn't following you on Twitter, Kaiser, and I was like, oh, <laughs> why am I not following Kaiser? <laughs> I thought I was. <sighs> That's cool, Jaden. But like I said, today's stream, gonna be purely, purely a reaction. So let's have some fun today, shall we? Make sure that my headphones are on the right audio input as well. It was supposed to let me hear that video too, but it didn't. I hope the sound was on. Yeah, seven years absent, or maybe a seven-day absence, I don't know. When was the last time Lily uploaded a has -been video? Oh, I saw the filth you post today, Kaiser. I saw it. I saw it. I just didn't favorite it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be putting up a short of that, don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be pause. I'm probably pausing a lot. I mean, it's only a 27... Uh, minute video, which means it'll probably take us about four hours uh, to get through. So, <laughs> I did that last time, Swampling, too. So, uh, let me turn viewer attack and stickers back on. So, we can we can all have a little fun with that too. If you weren't here last time, um, you guys can now throw shit at the screen if you want to on Twitch. Only Twitch, though. I'm sorry. YouTube doesn't have fun features. <laughs> he made the first couple as a joke, and now it's serious? Yeah, well, welcome to my world, Kaiser. Everything I do starts as a joke, or starts by accident. <laughs> and now we're here, and it's complex. Uh, where's, uh, hang on, I want to demonstrate the, uh, the viewer attack for you guys real quick before we, uh, start. So, throwing tomatoes is free. Throwing a rock is 100 bits. <laughs> Throwing an egg is 50 bits. Uh, what else do I have here? Throwing a shuriken is 300 bits. <laughs> I'm very easily amused. Uh, throwing toilet paper is 200 bits. So, there you go. There you go. You guys have fun with that. <laughs> I'll just throw your phone and send me into oblivion. Yeah, that'll show me. <laughs> oh, I see people already getting their tomatoes ready. Yeah, like I said, unfortunately, it's only a Twitch feature. I have I have turned you two against you. Just housekeeping, Daniel. And also, I I played a little video at the beginning of the stream, but that'll that'll get uploaded by itself. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what else I expected. You should be throwing them at Lily, not me. <laughs> No one has people's names this time. It didn't do that last week. Weird. Hey, Kaiser, whatever. Whatever is making you work. Anyway. Yeah, right? No, it's just, uh... People like when I, uh, when I react to Lily and I am at the, I am at the whims of my audience. Like, like the shill I am. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, it has your name if you link it? Okay. All right. Let's get this bitch started, because like I said, I ain't got nothing to draw today. So it's just going to be... Just react. Yep, no tomatoes for YouTube. Maybe one day YouTube will have fun things. They can super chat. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> you can give me money. I hate how fucking YouTube autoplays. Like, when you just hover over a fucking thumbnail, even if you don't, it just autoplays. Why does it do this? Yeah, I want. I kind of wanted to react to Yandere Dev whenever he released a video about, you know, all of his accusations that he said he was going to, but I don't think he's going to do that anymore because he released, he, he deleted the first apology. So, anyway, I am, I am in danger. I am in danger. Let me, let's turn back, let's turn the fun back on for a second. <laughs> I am in danger of agreeing with Lily Orchard today because I also think that the Vibsy Pop fucking goddamn controversy is a fucking bullshit. I can't keep up this act without a screen. <laughs> anyway, I, I can switch to Syester whenever I want, though, yeah. <laughs> yes. Keat Soda, you've asked that. I am going to pause every seven seconds. We know this. Okay, let's make sure the sound is good when I start the video, because I think I'm I'm going by desktop audio today, because the Chrome audio isn't working for some reason. I don't know why that this decided to stop working on me, but, you know, it's my stream. Something always breaks. Anyway. <laughs> Here we go. Let me tell you, don't put out a video analyzing work strictly on its own merits when the creator is Twitter's milking machine of the week. You'll end up caught... Strictly on its own merits. Well, yeah, because you don't bitch about Vivzy Pop the same way you bitch about Rebecca Sugar like everybody else does. So... Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of some supreme bullshit. Once I posted on my Tumblr feed about how I was covering Has Been Hotel, it was like I'd kicked a hornet's nest and had people demanding me to give a thesis on every single solitary brain fart that had been said about it and the creator for the last five years. I've really grown to hate discourse, which is ironic because discourse is my job. My life is a comedy. But over the last... Discourse is your job? I mean, your job is to review cartoons, Lily. You have decided to make this your job. You have elected to make this your job. And all you do is complain about it. And then you interject politics and your own personal bullshit into it. And then you talk about Kingdom Hearts for 20 minutes and never make a point. Um, holy lava, I'm not entirely sure how viewer attack works from your guys' end. Uh, just, just fuck around with it a bit. <laughs> few years, it seems like shit has gotten more and more personal, more parasocial, and I'm having- Oh, you wanna talk about personal and parasocial problems with a fucking showrunner, Lily fucking Orchard? You really wanna be talking about that and calling out other people for that bullshit when you've spent the last five years mentioning Rebecca Sugar in every single fucking video you make? I think you use the panel on the, uh, if you're on desktop. I don't know how it works on mobile. Sorry. I'm, I just implemented it. I don't actually know how it works. <laughs> Tomatoes are free, though. Tomatoes are always free. There you go. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Having trouble keeping up with every single Twitter bad guy of the week. And I say this as someone who has been Twitter's bad guy of the week several times now. A major problem with trying to critique art in mm, so edgy. is that when it comes to animation, at the very least, the art itself is only a tiny piece of the puzzle. The vast majority of critique toward a series, for most people, is actually a critique of the creator's Twitter feed. I talked about this issue during my coverage of Steven Universe. For reasons that elude me, and which I'm certain will elude most people, Rebecca was holding interviews- <sighs> You cannot- you you were just saying, Lily, you were just saying people have, like, insane parasocial hatred of showrunners on Twitter. And here you are, bringing up Steven Universe again. Don't throw tomatoes at Steven, throw them at Lily. <laughs> but it, yeah, people are too parasocial about showrunners. Anyway, Steven Universe, <laughs> Lily! You, she's gotta be doing this on purpose, right? She, she's gotta be fucking doing this on purpose. There's just no goddamn way. Yeah, we need a counter for, like, the fucking Steven Universe measure. I wish I had some alcohol. I'd make it a fucking drinking game. Oh, Kaiser. Kaiser, someone, uh, someone much, much, uh, more annoying than you has pissed me off, uh, this week. Don't worry. You're fine. <laughs> We're not getting into that right now, though. <laughs> ...in live streams every single damn week that show was on the air, which... It 
She gave interviews and was on live streams while her show was airing. That is very normal. What the what the fu even like even like shitty little movies nobody cares about gets interviews with the actors and things. I don't I, I'm you know, yeah again, we're one we're one whole minute into the video and I'm already losing my fucking mind. <laughs> Yeah, right, you get alcohol poisoning if we tried to make a Lily Orchard a drinking game. One of these days, we should write a parody of a Lily video and I can just perform it. You didn't have to talk like Ben Shapiro the entire time. That's how you sound like Lily Orchard. I speak very fast in a staccato way. This means I'm unemotional and totally logical, and I am the correct one, and you are crazy, not me. I'm totally not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, wasn't all that much. I know it's just been a week, but we'll be back in six months! These interviews provided more details okay. toward the story and often contradicted the show in multiple ways. My favorite Oh, you're gonna give an example? Let's listen. Example of this is simply how the gems experience gender. If you only watch the show, the gems what? are a monogendered race of only women. If you watched all the yeah. live streams and all the interviews, you know the gems are actually a thinly veiled copy of the Asari from Mass Effect. Gender. No, they're fucking not! No, they're fucking not! Yes, the Asari are all female. And the reason the Asari are all female in Mass Effect is so they have an excuse to have sexy blue women stripping. <laughs> Like, the reason why the Asari were all female in Mass Effect was entirely down to the male gaze. Okay, now I'm gonna have to go on a tangent. Now I'm gonna go on a tangent because Lily Orchid is, is, is talking shit. So, when Mass Effect 2 came out, there were no gay romance options. Even though in many parts of the game, it was hinted at there should have been gay romance options. Like, Jack very heavily implies she's bisexual. Tally will flirt with a female shepherd. So people asked, hey, why aren't there any gay romances? And Casey Hudson came out and said, well, you know, our M-rated game is like a PG-13 movie. So it would be inappropriate to have, like, you know, gay stuff. Even though you have cross-species fucking, but gay stuff is, is, oh, that's too much. And then he said, well, Liara and Shepard and female Shepard aren't really a lesbian couple because Asari are monogendered, which I don't know how that fucking logic works. And they're still all female. They reproduce via parthenogenesis by mind melding with their partner. And again, of course, they're a race of sexy blue women who can just fuck anything in any race and, of course, are eager to dick down as soon as they discover what men are. Yeah, totally not the male gaze here. <laughs> I love Mass Effect, I do! But dear God, it can be really sexist sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, the gems aren't the Asari at all. Asari are biological, for one thing. They live for thousands of years, but they are mortal. They give birth. They still give birth. That's how they reproduce. They just reproduce via parthenogenesis like a fucking shark. You know? Or those lesbian lizards. Or whatever. You know? So, like... Like... And gems are... Conscious manifestations of light that are projected by a gemstone. And they live forever. And they don't reproduce sexually at all. They fucking put put things in the ground to make gems. What are you talking about? Oh god, people told me this video was gonna be boring, but you know, fucking Hi Farfalla, glad you made it. <laughs> yeah, but listen, the Asari were totally there for the male gaze. Basically what Casey Hudson was telling us was like, no, no, the female Shepherd and Liara romance in Mass Effect 1 wasn't for you, lesbians. Ew, no. That was for the men. They're not technically lesbians because you know the asari are all female so that that logic works somehow yeah so far lily has spent this has been hotel video getting things wrong about steven universe and mass effect <laughs> why do you always do this lily <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm going a little super super shine too right now <laughs> i think it's warranted 
Anyway, let's let's listen to the rest of this fucking explanation. Genderless, but also femme presenting. Contradictions. They're not genderless. They're literally female. What the fuck? Are you? Gender is a social thing. Did we do we not all understand this? Biological sex is physical. Gender is social. So to the Asari, they wouldn't need to have other genders because they only have one sex. Kind of the same with gems, except gems are actually sexless, technically. But, again, who the fuck cares? One of the reasons I like Steven Universe so much is we have all of these female characters that get to be all of these varying body types and personalities, and it's not played for, like, a joke. Because, look, look at a character like Jasper in any other cartoon. She would be like, aha, look how funny it is that this woman is big and muscular and not conventionally feminine by the gender roles of our society. Haha, <laughs> isn't that funny? You know? It's like, what are you even talking about? It's, Jesus Christ. It's like this existed all over the series. The show clearly establishes one thing and then Sugar goes on to an interview to walk it back two days later. Pearls are... How did she walk it back? They're all women! They're all women! Just like Rebecca Sugar is also a woman because she says she is a non-binary woman. So, Lily, are, are people not women when they say they're women, Lily? Um, I don't know if you should be saying that. I'm just, it might be a hot take, but just uh, putting it out there. <laughs> ah! No! I don't want to see Lily's retrospective! <laughs> Get back there! More and more anyway. More parasocial. I right clicked by accident. We know how I can't keep my hand off the right click button. Over the series, the show clearly establishes one thing, and then Sugar goes on to an interview to walk it back two days later. Pearls are slaves. Oh no, no, because they call their diamonds my diamond possessively, implying that they're. No one ever denied the pearls are technically slaves. Find me an interview, Lily. Find me a fucking interview where anyone said, "No, the pearls aren't slaves." I don't know, horny angel, but that's what she says, okay? So, <laughs> and that's what she says about the gems, all right? So, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, oh. Lily is just making up shit about Steven Universe in a completely unrelated video once again! Ugh. Well, yeah, but, like... <sighs> Yeah, well, of course Lily is jealous that Rebecca has a successful career. That's why anyone is pissed off at Rebecca Sugar or Vivzy Pop. Because they have successful careers and came from the internet and are women. That's why. <laughs> that, is the, that is why. Mm. Yeah, Lily! I just uploaded three pages of a fight comic between Jasper and Spinell, and my, my very special version of Spinell that I made. And I am telling you to get the fuck over Steven Universe. <laughs> Holy shit! There at the top because that's how hierarchies work. It is an honor to serve my queen. Now you're talking about fucking World of Warcraft again. Nobody plays that shit anymore. <laughs> Go play Final Fantasy XIV, Lily. Oh my god, Sylvanas is the South. If you ever talked about how fucked up it was that they let dictators off the hook, you've probably heard some Steven Universe fanboy explode in a cloud of Jito dust and. So we're a minute fifty-seven into this fucking video, and Lily has only talked about. Mass Effect and Steven Universe and saying, well, I've been Twitter's number one enemy, hee hee hoo ha ha ha, aren't I edgy? Thank you for the super keep chat. Keep talking, send a $5 super chat. $5 from keep talking. <laughs> Lily, try not to mention Steven Universe challenge impossible. Okay, I think we, I think the voice actually went through this time. I was very sad watching back, uh, I want hug that gator part four. That the super chat didn't didn't fire off audibly on the stream because I think it was you who sent it too, and it like you put all the crocodile emotes, and it was just going crocodile, 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 crocodile. <laughs> it was really fucking funny. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, this video is about Hasbin Hotel. Apparently, you can't see it behind my big fat fucking head, but it's there. Sweat mist actually, Steven never explicitly forgave them. And the reason they say that is because uh -huh. Becky said it in an interview, and that's supposed to explain his sudden dislike of them in the movie. No, because we can tell that he isn't comfortable with them still. Like, fucking we could we could watch the show and follow the the visual storytelling, unlike you, Lily. 
God, I didn't think this video was going to be worth it, but two minutes in, and I'm already turning into a rage monster. Thank you. Super Saiyan! Wait a minute, I think I have, a, I think I have the noise on my soundboard, yes. Anyway. <laughs> They say that is because Becky said it in an interview, and that's supposed to explain his sudden dislike of them in the movie. Now, a lot of this was nakedly obvious backpedaling of somebody who'd been caught in a plot hole and was weirdly bothered about that. But to an extent, I can understand doing that. If I had someone badgering me about every single plot element from a project I'm working on in real time, I'd give the word of God equivalent to fuck you as well. Lily, when are you talking about has been fucking hotel? Why can't you go a single video without talking about Steven Universe? The show has been over for like three years. <laughs> what is the matter with you? And again, I'm still a Steven Universe fan artist, and even I'm telling you, you need to fucking get over it. <laughs> and I have, but as a critic. Oh, 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 we got another super chat coming in. Thank you, thank you. I'm waiting for it to fire. Hello? Tears of Santa, six dollars and fifteen cents super chat. 5 euros and 71 cents from Tirza. Lily has thought more about Steven Universe and Rebecca than any fan has. <laughs> it's true. Rebecca Sugar lives rent free in Lily Orchard's head. Not even just like, like, she, she's got like a couch in there and a bowl of popcorn, you know, and her pets probably. Probably Ian Jones Cordy is in there with her too, <laughs> <just> hanging out. <laughs> it's, it's the, Lily's brain is their summer retreat, probably. <laughs> who is both busy and can't be bothered tuning into every single vein of a fandom, it's fucking obnoxious trying to keep track of what in a work was actually true, and what's just been spontaneously retconned by the director opening their mouth on Twitter. While I'm working on this, I'm working on a video about Digimon, and in regards to discussing the relationship between Tai and Kari, I'm- Why well, I wasn't even listening. I was- I was too busy laughing at the tomatoes and reading chat. Why are we fucking talking about Digimon now? Save this for your community posts. <laughs> I'm having to make a decision to use the show or the director's- See, I, no, I was saying this to somebody the other day. That Lily seems to believe that everyone who watches her videos is completely aware of, like, her entire history and every video she's ever made and any of every opinion she's ever had and every series she likes and then just throws them in with zero explanation. So if you're just some chuckle fuck who's browsing YouTube Wanting to watch a video in Has Been Hotel, and in the first three minutes, you're getting, like, you're getting, like, jerked around between, like, four different subjects that are completely unrelated, and you'll have no idea why if you don't know who Lily Orchard is. This is a terrible way to make videos, like, beyond anything else, this is just, this is just a terrible way to make videos. At least when I talk about my personal shit or my likes on stream, I, like, give you guys context? Because I know, I don't expect every single one of you to be completely familiar with everything I've ever said. I don't even remember half the things I say. <laughs> Imagine if Lily talks about Power World. Hey, Power World is fun. I'm still playing it. I have a server. <laughs> Jer Bear sent a $5 super chat. $5 from Jer Bear. Oh my goodness, Lily thank you for all the super chats. Digimon is incest somehow. Just get to his bin, please. It's why we showed up. Full sent a one dollar and ninety nine cents super chat. One oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Cents from full. As a fellow Lily, we don't claim her skull. Swampling LVR sent a five dollars super chat. Five dollars mm -hmm. from Swampling LVR. No, she's making a Digimon video because she's writing a sister incest story. She says it's based on. You guys just hit me with a lot <laughs> right in a row here. Thank you for the super chats, though. I do very much, very much appreciate them. Thank you so much. Um, it, 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 hopefully too much shit isn't happening on screen for you guys. I know this can be a lot <laughs> with the tomatoes and everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, um, I think Lily does claim to have ADHD, but yeah, like, you gotta, like, you still have to be a good presentator and a good performer to make content. I mean, when I'm on stream... I'm performing. I mean, I'm still pretty true to my personality, but I am definitely performing for you guys, you know? <laughs> Let's see, in the Twitch chat, we got, what do you want to bet her opinion on Hasbin will turn sour in Season 2? 
And the opinion will certainly be that one of the ships is problematic. Probably. But anyway, so some people have told me now that Lily thinks Digimon is about incest. I know even less about Digimon than I do about Pokemon. I'm old, sorry. Um, I had heard inklings that Lily was working on a new project that isn't that Scars thing. And it's about two little girls. I don't think I want to fucking know, to be honest. People tell me things sometimes, and I'm just like, I, I don't know. Other, I, 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 uh, I, I rely on the Lily Orchard scholars to, to inform me of, uh, the deeper, the deeper bullshit. <laughs> the lore going on. Why are you tomatoing me? Okay, you want me to get on with the video? Is this what you're telling me, chat? <laughs> statements and interviews because they're both very different. So it's for this reason that years ago I decided not to bother with the whole affair and my policy is that I only critique what is in the work and extra biblical lore is only acknowledged when- I only critique what is in the work, says Lily Orchard, after a solid minute of complaining about things Rebecca Sugar has said in interviews that are not part of the work. That you hold against her when making your critiques. The fuck? <laughs> I'm autistic too! I'm just older, so I'm a little more well-adjusted. I mean, well, how well-adjusted I am is, I suppose, up to your interpretation. <laughs> but, considering what I do for a living. <laughs> can be used to slap a creator over the head for being weird. Did an art stream where you revealed crucial information about a character? Sucks to be you, that's not canon. Made a Twitter post confirming characters were gay after the finale ended? Well, thanks, JK Rowling. You're not getting any points for that. This is- You know, like, do you, do you know when Harry Potter was written, they, like, it was illegal to put gay content in, in children's books Ray in the UK? Ray sent a $10 super chat. Thank $10 you. $10 from Ray Hokent. I'll just watch her videos through you. It's more fun that way. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I understand that, Rayo Re Kent. I have that where I'm like, oh, thank God, the streamer I like is watching this video that was too cringe for me to watch on my own. Like, I had to go watch, I had to go watch, like, Ben Shapiro's Barbie review. Haverlock Re sent a $10 Ooh, Oh my goodness, chat, thank you. $10 from Haverlock. Lily is the kind of person who complained about Doom being a white savior narrative when the first movie came out, and completely <laughs> ignoring the clear tone and themes of colonialism and zealotry bad. Look, I don't, I don't know much about Dune either. I've never been into it. I'm not defending anything. I'm just saying, like, when Harry Potter was being written, you literally could not put gay characters in children's books in the UK. But, I mean, I, I read the books once, like, what the fuck, like, 20 years ago, whenever they were popular. And, like, even I was, like, reading, like, the last one, going, I think, I think Dumbledore has a crush on Grindelwald. Like, I was sitting there thinking... Am I projecting my own gayness onto this, or is this actually happening here? And then afterwards, she was like, BT dubs, Dumbledore is gay. And it's like, yeah, I've been new. I thought, I'm pretty, pretty sure he was the way he was talking about his friend there. But like, like, it's, it's, it's just a claim that like, oh, you, oh, it's bad that you said this character was gay after the fact when you were literally not allowed to show they were gay in the content. You know, it's like Lily complaining that Steven Universe characters never say, like, the words lesbian or girlfriend or wives. Which, A, they're aliens, why would they use those words? And B, the Cartoon Network would never have let them. <laughs> you know? So that's just a stupid fucking argument. Ugh. I do kind of agree, though, that things that are outside of a show... It shouldn't shouldn't be factored in too heavily. Oh my god. Keep talking, send a five dollars super chat. Five dollars from Keep Talking. Steven Universe made Lily's brain blue screen. It should be the perfect <laughs> show for her. Look at the lesbians Lily shakes keys. <laughs> well, that's like Lily thinking fucking Utano is just about gay rep, even though No, that wasn't the intent. Especially back in Japan in the 90s, you fucking retard. <laughs> but but yeah, thank you for all the super chats, you guys. You're being very generous. You can interrupt the video all you like if you're if you're paying me for. <laughs> yeah, no, I know Dune is I know Dune is very respected and and complex and shit. I'm sorry about the ads too. Uh, um, but uh, I know it. I know it's. I know it's. 
I, I'll, I'll wait till the ads are maybe finished to continue. I don't. I I can't tell when they're playing because I'm bad at this. Um. But uh uh uh, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought now. Thank you for the constant stream of tomatoes. Good thing I made that sidechan head B roll for for videos, but um, like, yeah, I don't. Know. I'm just I'm just waiting out to see when 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 Twitch chat says the ads are over. Okay, ads are over. We can continue. I'm sorry about that, guys, but you know, Amazon's giving me buddy. I guess I probably made like twenty cents. I don't. <laughs> It's been delightfully freeing, as not only do I not have to spend a massive amount of time hunting down self-contradictory interviews, I also get to enjoy the art uncolored by the creator standing over my shoulder telling me what I'm supposed to be feeling. No, Lily, you seeking out interviews with Rebecca Sugar is not Rebecca Sugar standing over your shoulder telling you what to think. Do you have no concept of mind? <laughs> What is the matter? I have barely read any interviews about Steven Universe. Everything I... All my headcanons and stuff, I have extrapolated from the show itself. The only thing I, I reference that's extra... You know, metatextual, is that... Ian and Rebecca said that the gems never fought other intelligent species. Which I don't fucking like, but... It's what they said, <laughs> you know, and also kids show. Why are we fucking talking about Digimon again? Hosada, that's not a wife meeting her husband's mistress. That's a girl meeting her brother's knockoff Pokemon. I will fucking hit you. It also means that- The fuck is he- Again, Lily just throwing out these things with zero context. Expecting, like, people to get it. Like- <sighs> I mean, I still have people. I still have people. When I uploaded my community post with the comic today, I had one person going, "You do switcheroo, are you?" <laughs> you know, even though I'm drawing it in the background of half of my videos. So, like, you can't expect everybody to know like everything about you every time you make a video. <laughs> what is the matter with you? Can we replay the Digimon clip? Sure, sure. I'm sorry if the tomato sounds are too loud. I might try. See if I can turn it down a bit. <laughs> I have the extension open. Hang on, I'm just going to turn down the sound a bit because it might be a little annoying. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go back to see what that fucking Digimon clip was. Maybe it's one of you who is a familiar with Digimon can explain it to me. ...over my shoulder telling me what I'm supposed to be feeling. No, Hosada, that's not a wife meeting your husband's mistress. That's... Okay, wait, wait, what's the fucking text on the screen say? If you ask me what her conflict is about, I think it's a battle between her and Kuromon. There's a scene where Taichi is just laying on the sofa and... I... What are you e Oh, is this an interview with the creator? So he's joking... He's... So the creator was joking that this conversation had the vibe of a wife meeting the mistress. Not that, that it was, not that it was literally that. He's obviously saying it's... It's the vibe. That's like saying two people sound like an old married couple. That doesn't mean you, like, literally believe they're married or want them to get married. D Lily, you don't understand metaphors. And you, you can't even understand, like, common turns of phrase. Not to mention, this was probably translated from Japanese? So, like, that might be a common reference or saying in Japanese for all you fucking know. How about you don't assume things, Lily? And just jump to crazy conclusions that the show is about incest somehow. Because you seem really, really, really focused on incest for some reason. And you have certain allegations out there that are, uh, kind of, uh, <clears throat> kind of shaky. I I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Osada, that's not a wife meeting your husband's mistress. That's a girl meeting her brother's knockoff Pokemon. I will fucking hit you. It also means that going into Hasman Hotel, I was completely unaware of the fact that Madrano had spent the last five years getting subjected to the kind of parasocial obsessive loser hatred that's usually reserved for trans women. And sorting.
Or you mean the kind of a parasocial obsessive loser behavior for five years that you have done toward Rebecca Sugar? You're gonna pretend that you're the victim here somehow? Fuck off, Lily! You've done the exact same fucking shit about Rebecca Sugar for the last, like, five or six years! But you're saying, like... I don't even know. <laughs> oh, but I'm the victim somehow. <laughs> through that is almost always a nightmare. How do I determine an actual criticism of Medrano's work from something completely blitheringly stupid? Furthermore- Yeah! How do people separate actual criticism from st of Steven Universe from something completely blitheringly stupid? <laughs> Lily! She has to be doing this on purpose. She has to be. She can't possibly really be this dumb, right? Like... Right? <laughs> Guys, help me out here. Oh, God, I am so heated today. <laughs> I might have been a little primed before this chat. I may have been fist fighting people on Twitter all morning and all last night. <laughs> Don't worry about it, though. Or with a stupid criticism, how do I determine stupidity from malicious lying? Well, honestly. Well, geez, Lily, how do we determine stupidity from malicious lying? Maybe you could tell us, because you do both regularly, on a regular basis. So maybe you can elucidate for us the difference between stupidity and malicious lying, because you should know. Jesus Christ, I can't believe somebody told me this video was going to be boring. <laughs> You're saying put Lily's face on so you can throw tomatoes? Oh, right. You can't see Lily's, um... You can't see Lily's, um... Uh, avatar. Oh, but the wife is in the avatar, too. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> Did you put your wife in your avatar? Just to protect yourself, Lily? Are you using your wife as a meat shield, Lily? <laughs> anyway, let's just keep going. Honestly, I just don't bother. I critique a work on its own merits and let the reality of what's in front of me speak for itself. You have never cr cr critiqued a work on its own merits in your entire fucking life. Like, I'm not familiar with the other shit you cover, but the things people have told me about how you cover My Little Pony and Owl House sounds like you do the exact same shit as Steven Universe. So, huh, yeah. Self. That, was a, that, was, I that was a great uh, scene to pause on, too, wasn't it? <laughs> I found myself in an interesting position because parasocial weirdos will always interpret a work in the worst light possible. Because parasocial weirdos will always interpret a work in the worst way possible. You don't fucking say, Lily Orchard. You don't fucking say- Why can't I get to your, your fucking account from your avatar? It's saying 404 not found. I was gonna pull an awesome gag. But you ruined it, Lily. Or YouTube ruined it for me. Anyway, see, the wife's in the- in the, you know. So, yeah, Lily. Yeah, Lily. Talk about parasocial retards being malicious about media, Lily. You, you really want to talk about that, Lily? Look, I- all I look- look, look at that. I just typed Steven Universe. And even the- even the ones where it's just Steven Universe characters in the thumbnails and not actually about Steven Universe came up. Like, you're not fucking milking this. What the fuck is this old, like, five-second movies you, d you done did here? Looks like garbage. But yeah, yeah, oh, imagine parasocial people making stupid and malicious comments about a piece of media because they have a really strange parasocial vendetta against the creator. Yeah, imagine, imagine somebody fucking doing that, Lily. Let's see, regarding the Digimon thing, the only way I can see the wife meets mistress joke working, if it's not translation, is Akari like finding out that her brother has been on an adventure with Koromon while she wasn't included. Yeah, that's what he's saying! So he's saying, uh, the, the brother had, like, this secret friend, and now the, 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 the sister is meeting the Pokemon, or the, the Digimon, and it's awkward, like, a wife meeting the mistress. That's all that guy was saying. Uh, if... Like, Jesus Christ. Light mode jump scare? Fuck you, I'll use light mode if I want to! <laughs> I just, like... What is this? 
Does she even have mirrors in her house? So the lack of self-reflection is shocking. That was a good one. <laughs> no, Lily hasn't talked about Digital Circus. That might be too high concept for Lily. You know, I'm sure Lily would find some way to make it about fascism or something. I'm also a millennial. We said the R word all the fucking time, you guys. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like every single video, every single video, Lily cannot stop bringing up Steven Universe. My fave has been a character. Well, obviously. Keep talking. Oh, since two dollars super chat. Two dollars from Keep Talking. Change to dark mode now. <laughs> no, you can't make me. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, who who's my favorite has been character? Why I wonder. I wonder who my favorite has been hotel character is. I did not expect to like the Tumblr sexy man, but here we are. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, I don't know, True Peanut. I just gave people permission to throw tomatoes at stream, and they are going hog wild with that. Uh, so this was a, this was a choice. This was a choice I made. I might have to add a bigger cooldown, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm throwing Mimsy! Hey, that's Sarah Styles! That's Spinel, you know? <laughs> I like Husk. I actually- I actually expected Husk to be my favorite. Because he's an old curmudgeon with a heart of gold and he's voiced by Keith David. I was like, I have no fucking chance. But then Alistair turned out to be my favorite. <laughs> I do love Lucifer a lot too, uh, Flame Eagle Heart. I, I love how every single autistic fan went, um... Saw Lucifer and said, uh, one of us. Stop Moss B sent a $5 super chat. $5 from Stop Moss B. Stop Moss B for five says nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for saying nothing and giving me money. That, that, is, that is wonderful. Anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm gay for Keith David. That makes a lot of sense. No, I grew up with Keith David. He was, he was Goliath and Gargoyles. He was like my childhood. <laughs> And then he was, then he was Admiral Anderson in Mass Effect, and he was my, my shepherd's, my shepherd's, like, father figure, so I cried, I cried like a little baby during three. Well, Lucifer totally comes off as autistic. <laughs> he does! With his duck obsession and his zoning out in the middle of sentences and his general just the way he is. <laughs> the ducks. It's the ducks that do it. It's the ducks that makes him an autist. <laughs> My favorite Power World creature? I have one of those Hell Zephyrs right now. I think that's what they're called. The the spooky bat-like, you know, purple and, and blue glowing uh, flying mounts. Uh, I've been riding around on one of them. So, so far, that's kind of my favorite. <laughs> I will not remember the names of Power World monsters. Just like I don't remember the names of Pokemon. <laughs> you didn't know he was Goliath? Oh yeah, Keith David was Goliath. Keith David did a lot of voice acting, even back then. It's weird, he's one of those actors I think of mostly as a live-action actor, like Clancy Brown, even though mo both of them have done more voice acting by now than live-action acting, I think. <laughs> but I still think of them as live-action actors, I don't know why. <laughs> because fueling that hatred is the most important thing to them. Oh, you mean like you did with Steven Universe, Lily? Yes, exactly like that. But being Yes, Lily, exactly like that! Are you gonna excuse that? Or are you gonna be like a snotty little shit, Lily? I mean, like you did with Steven Universe, Lily. Yes, exactly like that. But being able to actually look at it with an untainted perspective has shown some rather interesting insight on not. So, is you just admit that your view on Steven Universe is heavily tainted, including your views that you just expressed in this very video? I should make reviews of Pokemon to get back at her. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll just be, all I'd have to do, all I'd have to do is write a script about Pokemon without looking up anything about it and just going by what I know on like Wikipedia and then just make up shit to be angry about. And that would be like a Lily Orchard video. So, yeah. Just creative works themselves, but also how fandom reaches the point of twisted internal logic. Maybe one of these days. Okay, so, like, can you separate fandom from the actual shows, though? Like, that seems to be one of your biggest fucking problems. Like, you're like, oh, the fandom is bad. This is the show's fault somehow, and the fault of the showrunner, and the fault of the showrunner giving interviews 
that pissed me off somehow because they said things about their own show. Uh, I, uh, I need a drink. <laughs> I only have water. <laughs> Maybe maybe that's what I'll do. I'll I will I will have Chat GPT write me a script about Pokemon and read it in a Ben Shapiro voice and pretend I'm Lily. And that would be funny. <laughs> yeah, look, I get I get being annoyed with people online. Man, that sticker is still really big. I thought he shrunk Keep it. Keep talking send a five dollars <laughs> super chat. Five dollars from Keep Talking. Being aware of it doesn't excuse it, Lily. It's like a movie trying to bring attention to a cliche, <laughs> but then they do it anyways. Stop it. Yeah, you're right, keep talking, you're right. Also, thank you so much for the super chat. You've been super chatting a lot. Thank you so much. But, um, yeah, Lily will say, like, well, pointing out that you know it's a cliche doesn't mean you're not doing a cliche. Uh, oh my god, stream, switch, switch chat with the, the crying, laughing... Steven with the wings on either side is, is fucking amazing right there. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so, like, yeah, just because you know you're being shitty doesn't mean you're not being shitty, Lily. And you're not a complete fucking hypocrite. And my audio is going to be better in this stream, hopefully. So it won't be as annoying to listen to as the other has been stream. So maybe one wing Steven. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Anyway, maybe I need to get one wing angel on my soundboard like Deadwing because I, I I'll just keep copying him. <laughs> Days I can write an intro where I don't sound like an alien. So the biggest point. Oh, what was that comment? But also how fandom reaches the point of twisted internal logic. Maybe one of these days I can write an intro where I don't sound like an alien. So the biggest point. Yeah, maybe one of these days you could write an intro where you don't spend four minutes talking about like a bunch of completely. <laughs> is my audio covered in the splat sound effects? God damn you all. <laughs> Jer Bear sent a $5 down. super chat. $5 from Jer Bear. Lily. Prob. This is Black Diamond. She is the most problematic <laughs> diamond. She's also the one Pink most likes to mistreat. <laughs> I'm surprised Lily didn't talk about Black Diamond in a video, having having heard it in like 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 a like a fucking uh what was I gonna say? I can't even concentrate. You guys are throwing too many tomatoes. <laughs> I do not play Stardew Valley. Sorry. No, don't throw. Yeah, don't throw my Alistair. You might get haunted tonight. Um, I know the tomatoes make a splat sound. They didn't before because I, I, I'm, all, I'm using my desktop audio today. So, uh, <laughs> you get all the sounds because I didn't like the super chats not firing. But now we're, now we're all doing this. All right, I'm gonna. It, it. Okay, the sounds are really quiet now. That's good. You balance this a little fucking bit. I can control, I can control the extension on my other screen. Haha, <laughs> take that. Anyway. So yeah, Lily, you could have just, like, started the fucking video here. And just talked about the fucking show. We're only four minutes in, you guys. And we've been streaming for, like, 45 minutes. Oh, you can still hear them faintly. Uh, but if they're, if they're, if they're, like, overwhelming my voice, that's probably not a great thing. <laughs> They're overwhelming the video, too. So. Okay, okay. You guys are just really want to get home. Well, it's, you know what, though? It's, it's Pilot Alistair. You can throw those at him. He kind of sucked. Point of contention was and remains the way the show appropriates voodoo. And while I've always condemned this act. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here we go again. Here we go again. Oh, no. They put voodoo in the show. That is automatically... Uh, an appropriation and 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 racist and whatever the fuck other bullshit because I don't know people own religions I guess uh, and you know every single person I have talked to about this voodoo thing doesn't even know cursory knowledge about voodoo 
Like, I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert, but I know, like, a few things, because I think, like, comparative religion is interesting. And, like, so many of these people don't even know the difference between Haitian voodoo and Louisiana voodoo, and, like, like, one of them was like, oh, well, how could they, how could they make an evil person do voodoo? And I'm like, voodoo has dark practitioners in their own fucking lore. Hello, work text. Where is my phone? <laughs> it's somewhere on my desk. Ugh. Go away. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, tomatoes are a, uh, uh, are a Twitch thing only, Sprite the Wolf. Sorry about that. Uh, only Twitch lets us have fun. <laughs> I decided to implement this like two weeks ago, and I, I, I'm questioning. <laughs> I'm questioning it now. Yeah, like, I think they, uh, I think they, like, even, like, changed it in the final show where it's not real voodoo symbols, and it's just, like, kind of inspired by them, so who the fuck cares? Also, well, so what? We can't have a spooky voodoo practitioner in... in uh... <laughs> I have to tell you something. I've tried to use voodoo to try and transfer my soul into a cat plush. <laughs> I understood that reference. If you don't know, like, the first Chucky movie is all about a serial killer using voodoo to put himself in a doll, and it's stupid. That's not what, what's happening here, though. <laughs> if so, no one told me Alistair had some relation to voodoo, you never would have known. Exactly. They don't really even, like, focus on it. But yeah, okay, he was, he was a guy from Louisiana. He was a Creole guy from Louisiana in, like, the 1930s. So he practiced voodoo. That's pretty common for people who live in New Orleans, especially at that time. So? Uh, is Michaela the wifey? I don't know much about them, so her... I, didn't, I don't know. <laughs> so. How much of Riz does Lily have to get a wife? <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. It's Lily I have beef with, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna be mean to the wife. <laughs> Action, I've tried to look at it with a certain degree of nuance. You used to think Louisiana was a country? Well, kind of almost, well, kind of was at first, until America bought it, you know, from the French. <laughs> So, how does cultural appropriation have nuance, Lily? Well, you see, when I posted the video where I first discussed it, a lot of commenters were surprised to learn that voodoo is a real religion at all. I was too five years ago. For most of my life, I. You didn't know voodoo was a real religion five years ago? And you would have been in like your mid 20s? I guess you're Canadian, so I, I guess I can kind of see not being aware of it. Obviously, we're a little bit more aware of it in America because it is a big practice in Louisiana. But again, Louisiana voodoo is distinct from Haitian voodoo. So, yeah, they're like two different sects. Mm. There are so many voodoo references in Resident Evil 7. Yeah, nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that until it's it's has been fucking hotel. Because they just want reasons to hate Vivzy Pop. Just like Lily just wants reasons to hate Rebecca Sugar. I don't do voodoo. I'm a fucking atheist. <laughs> I don't believe in supernatural and spiritual shit. Uh, to me, voodoo is just as made up as any other religion or practice or magic, you know? But I, I still don't understand this whole argument like, oh, you can't use it in any media at all or you're, you're culturally appropriating because it's a, it's a closed religion, except that they literally have recruitment rituals. <laughs> and you can't just stop someone from just, like, picking up a book on voodoo and deciding to practice it. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> well, Europeans would probably be more likely to know what voodoo is, because, again, voodoo is Haitian. And it especially developed uh, when Haiti was uh, colonized by the French. So what happened was a bunch of native practices and belief systems and magic uh, stuff got mixed up with Catholicism, and that's voodoo. I actually got somebody mad at me for saying that. That voodoo is related to Catholicism. And I'm like, you're trying to say it's cultural appropriation and you don't even know basic facts about it. Have a lock sent a $5 super chat. 
$5 from Haverlock. Being Canadian isn't an excuse. It just makes her a lesser being. Yes, we allow Canadian uh, slander on this stream, because I'm American. Obviously, I have to talk shit about Canada, even though, like, my best friend and her husband live there. <laughs> I will keep doing it. Blame Canada. Blame Canada. They're not even a real country anyway. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a classic, arg that's a classic uh, reference. No, I will not stop arguing with 15-year-olds on Twitter. They need to not be on Twitter. <laughs> They think they can argue with adults. <laughs> uh, Christ. Ew, America 2. Or America 0 when we take over. That was a joke in Helsinger Bridge. <laughs> yeah, I love Canada. I wish it was real. You know, you saw Canada and all those... Uh, what, was the, what was the Mountie's name? The funny Mountie. Damn it, I was gonna make a joke about that, and I can't even fucking remember what it's called. It was like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Uh, whatever. A lot of commenters were surprised to learn that voodoo is a real religion at all. I was too five years ago. For most of my life, I thought the Loa were something World of Warcraft just made up, and I kept thinking that up until they introduced one named Buon Samdi, and th thought, hang on, I know that name. And indeed, that's the case with a lot of people. When Buon Samdi showed up, a lot of WoW players immediately went, hey, he's kind of like Dr. Facilier. Which uh, or he's like Baron Samedi, because it's in his name, and Dr. Facilier is based on Baron Samedi, and Alistair is based on Baron Samedi. So you don't know what the fuck you're talking about still? <laughs> uh, Baron Samedi is a very, very popular, famous figure in voodoo, and kind of like, you know, a New Orleans urban legend. It's not even like that hard to know. <laughs> yeah. This is Why is a this surprise. so loud? You're looking pretty good, your majesty. So, why have you come to see me? And this guy's that guy's cool though. I don't know enough about wow, but that guy's cool. And he even has a Haitian accent. So what's the problem? It would be like having like a paladin look like like an old crusader knight or something and have like christian-ish imagery yeah when we make things in fiction we tend to base them on things in Jesus real life sent a six dollars and 15 cents super chat five euros and 71 cents from tirza remember when tay crystal gems were searching for jasper and found her in tay snow area i'm convinced she went to canada Tirza, are you telling me the entire fight comic I just spent like a year and a half on, took place in Canada. I'm gonna have to delete it all now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't accept it though. My entire fight comic now took place in the wastelands of Canada. <laughs> See, I knew we'd be able to entertain ourselves even if Lily wasn't entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> You're learning so much through me. Well, good, good. It's always good to learn things. Whoa, that one actually went upside down. How did you do that? <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> good job, True Peanut. Look, to 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 quote to quote Frenchie, or at least to paraphrase Frenchie from the boys, I am a woman who knows a little about a lot of things. <laughs> I'm sort of a Jane of all lanes. I just, I, I, I absorb random bits of information from the world. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot tell you. I've been spinelled. Oh, God. <laughs> Jasper went to Canada and found Lily and just poofed herself. Yeah, probably. I didn't know the Earth carried such terrors as this. Just punches herself in the face. <laughs> Maybe we should misunderstand Kingdom Hearts. Piss of Does anybody actually understand Kingdom Hearts? Actually, let me let me take a little let me take a little uh, detour to a channel you all should watch. You should all watch the Lord Dump. I started watching this guy when he still had this stuff on his main channel, Monty Xander, and he and his buddies. Have 13 videos. 13 like multi hour long videos 
of two of the guys explaining Kingdom Hearts lore to the other guy. And it is so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna put the link in the chats. This will be your palate cleanser for tonight, kids. <laughs> it is it is so good. Well, the ads are back. Okay, I'll wait. We're uh, we're talking about a completely different channel. You should all watch anyway. The Alistair is the most fun to tomato. I swear, you guys are gonna get haunted tonight if you keep throwing tomatoes at Alistair. You know. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's thirteen. It's just a reaction video. I say before loading. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm like I'm gonna react the Lord dump. Yeah, okay, that that would work. But yeah, so. The lore dump is great, though, because you have one guy who kind of knows Kingdom Hearts and another guy who knows, like, he's, like, crazy about Kingdom Hearts lore, like I am about Steven Universe lore. And then the third guy knows jack shit. And they're all just talking about it, and it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's a good long listen. I highly, highly recommend. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, what, what did he do to deserve hearing all about, about all the Kingdom Hearts lore? Do I think Alistair... I don't think Alistair will be redeemed. I think Alistair thrives in the darkness. I think his goal is to become, like, ruler of hell himself. Because, you know... Better better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, right? I mean... <laughs> We're spinelling. We're spinelling the stream, everybody. I'm glad you guys are having fun with that. Being haunted by Alistair doesn't seem so bad. I mean, until he, like, eats your soul and broadcasts your screams, I suppose. <laughs> like, people seem to forget that Alistair is, like, pure fucking evil. And that's part of the reason I like him. You're supposed to get ads, but you have a black screen? Huh. Weird. What if all the demons get redeemed at once? Is that even possible? <laughs> We shall continue the stream, everybody. I can see you're getting impatient. <laughs> oh, God. Now nobody can see the screen. Okay? Calm down, chat! <laughs> I will take away your free privileges <laughs> if this keeps up. Let's... Well, thank you for interjecting, doggy. She just had a big old yawn behind me on the bed. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> and according to the behind-the-scenes sources, by which I mean has been Hotel's wiki, Alistair was largely inspired by Dr. Facilier as well. Ah. I'm... He wasn't inspired by Dr. Facilier, or maybe he was, but they're both inspired by Baron Semeti! <laughs> Uh, they stumbled onto the problem. See, Alistair is inspired by Dr. Facilier, but Dr. Facilier himself is inspired by an actual loi, Baron Samdi. A loi of- So what I just fucking said! Or Samdi, Samedi, I think you can pronounce it either way. Death, who is actually more well-known than any other loi because he keeps showing up in pop culture. He's about the yeah. only loi most people know of by name, and indeed, some people have heard of him, but don't know that he's a spirit for an actual religion and not just some pop culture character like Dr. So what? Yeah? Kind of like how we have characters based on the Greek gods. And how we have characters, like, who have, like, a literal Jesus arc in their stories. So what? Why is this one religion off limits? <laughs> Frankenstein. So right off the bat, Alistair is taking inspiration from a character who is only tangentially related to an actual figure in voodoo. You know, explains the magnitudes of green whenever his magic shows up, because green was a motif in Facilier's magic. Why is this important? Well, it tells me that Madrano thought Princess and the Frog was cool, went, I'm gonna copy the villain from IOC, and then googled voodoo symbols and went from there. I'm almost- So? So what? Even if she did, so what? No, this sounds like all she Lily just Googled, like, right before writing the script. Well, I just said, I just said, both of them are based on Baron Samdi. So. 
Hey, Jay, um, Lily spent the first four minutes of this video talking about Digimon, Steven Universe, and World of Warcraft. So the usual. And now is trying to teach us about voodoo and getting lots of things wrong and saying, well, Alist Alistair is based on Dr. Facilier, who was based on Baron Samdi, so that's bad. Oh, and Mass Effect, yes. Lily tried to claim the gems are based on the Asari from Mass Effect. Because they both happen to be alien races that are all female. That is literally the only thing they have in common. At all. You just covered me up completely. How fucking dare you? <laughs> I thought I made that sticker smaller. Okay, you guys are getting a little nuts with the stickers. <laughs> I might have to turn them off. <laughs> Did you just say what the hell is Mass Effect? Did you just say that to me? Certainly, Squid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a, it's a game series that I, I am very fond of. In fact, it might be one of the things I stream next. I will probably give you guys a poll after we're done with I Want Hug That Gator, which we will be doing tomorrow. Oh, somebody found the salty sticker. Oh, no! Thank you. Thank you for spending 50 bits to call me salty. You can spend money to, to, to make fun of me. I am, I am your dancing monkey, everybody. Thank you and then Googled voodoo symbols and went from there. I'm almost certain of this because of the way Alistair has veves all around him. In voodoo, veves aren't magic symbols. Except those veves are not actual voodoo symbols. So it's not a problem, Lily. Symbols that show up when you use magic, like that circle in card captors. They're beacons for a spirit because using magic in voodoo is actually borrowing it from a spirit. This is why in Princess Beacons for a Spirit, <laughs> FAs but... aren't magic symbols that show up when you use magic, like that circle in card cap. What the fuck do you think sigils are, Lily? What the fuck do you think sigils are? They are symbols that are made to facilitate magic. Usually in alchemy and paganism and Kabbalah. So is that appropriation too? Or do people just base magic systems on shit from real life? Because real life is the only thing we have to base anything on. Unless you know of some other universe out there. <clears throat> oh god, this hurts my head. So you think magic sig sigils that are based on like occultism and Kabbalah and alchemy are just decorative, but voodoo veves aren't. <laughs> because it lets you call somebody a racist who is culturally appropriating, or because you just don't have knowledge of these other things. Ugh. Ugh. Also, Card Captor Sakura is awesome, but Lily called it Card Captors, which means you only watched the Fox Kids version, didn't you, Lily? You only watched the Fox Kids version that took out all the gay shit, huh? Yeah. They're beacons for a spirit because using magic in voodoo is actually borrowing it from a spirit. This is why- That's magic in most folk religions, Lily. That's- that's what runes are. That's what sigils are. That's what the fucking Sephiroth is. It's drawing power from spiritual beings that people have convinced themselves exist. <sighs> she said it was the superior version that the Novana dub saved the show. I did say I was going to do Lily's anime video eventually. I might, I might need to have like a nurse uh, on on standby in case I have some sort of like aneurysm. It sounds like. Why would you think the version of Card Captor Sakura? That pretends it doesn't take place in Japan, even though you see the Tokyo Tower, like, every episode. And renames the characters things like Madison. And cuts out all the gay shit. How could you say that's the superior version? I'm just gonna assume Lily never saw the original Card Captor Sakura. Which, again, is pretty fucking good. I, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Clamp, but I do like Card Captor Sakura. <clears throat> but, yeah. The only show that dub is way better is Ghost Story. Yeah. <laughs> of course Lily hates Japan, because it's fashionable to hate Japan now, but say, but, but to hide it. You know, you have all these fucking progressives, quote unquote, 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 who, who, who say they're just, they're just talking about how anime is problematic when really they're being extremely xenophobic. <clears throat> you know. 
If only I knew how to say card captor soccer on Japanese, I would just to piss off Lily. <laughs> I, I, if I, if I decide to say an anime's title in in Japanese, it's completely random on my part. It's whatever I think sounds better. So like, I'll say Hoseki no Kuni instead of Land of the Lustrous. And usually I'll say Shoujo Kakumi Utena instead of Revolutionary Girl Utena, but, you know, it's just me. <clears throat> Maybe I should say Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but, yeah. You would, I mean, you would think that Lily would like the original of Cardcaptor Sakura, because it's got um, two middle school girls, and one of them has a lesbian crush on the other. Isn't that your kind of thing, Lily? <sighs> Why in Princess and the Frog, Facilier is in debt in the first place, because he keeps casting spells recklessly. In comparison to the other voodoo practitioner, Mama Odie, who casts them sparingly and has led a long and comfortable life. Oh yeah. Yeah, so like, just the typical good and, not good and evil, I wouldn't say things are good and evil in voodoo, it's very more, much more like blue and orange morality. You know, the morality of the spiritual, spirits don't think like humans, is the idea, so... You'll have, like, light voodoo practitioners and dark voodoo practitioners, and that is a part of voodoo. So saying having a dark voodoo practitioner is, like, racist or something is fucking stupid, because that's part of their own goddamn religion. Check my DMs. What are you trying to send me, Jay? <laughs> Uh-oh. Jay, you know I have my desktop audio on. If I play this, everyone will hear it, Jay. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. All right, I was watching your stream and I saw that you were trying to say Dragon Ball's name in Japanese and you're putting your whole heart into it. So I'm just going <laughs> to I'm going to show you up right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that interjection, Jay. <laughs> Jay is that, that animator I showed you guys before. Go check out his stuff, the J-Pro. It's really fucking good. <laughs> anyway. Did you know that? Did you know Mama Odie is also using voodoo magic? When he converses with the Loa, you can see in the background he has the Veves drawn on the ground around him. He does that specifically to call them. They're there for a purpose. The people who wrote Prince- So when Disney uses real voodoo symbols, it's fine. But when the Hasbun Hotel uses fake ones, it's appropriation. Ah, Dungeon Menshi. I've been thinking of watching that. It, I've seen some very funny clips. <laughs> and the frog actually did their research. And because the film is using it, but not explaining it, because it's not serving as an entry book for an entire faith, the same can't be said for the people who take inspiration from it. The fact that- Well, neither is Hasbun Hotel! Hasbun Hotel is not serving as an entry to teach you about voodoo. It never claimed to be. It doesn't even come up. What is this point you're trying to make? <laughs> I can't even. I can't even with this. You, you guys are going to get haunted. I'm telling you. <laughs> you're going to get fucking haunted. <laughs> yeah, and Alistair's a super old OC. Like, when did Princess and the Frog come out? 2012? Oh, Hi, thank you, Jay. Thank you for subscribing with your Prime account. Helps me out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you see, Sai, the creative has been hotel is an indie creator and a woman, so Lily has to complain about it. Yeah! Lily, you, you seem to uh, really, really go for the woman folk a lot. I'm just, uh, just put it out there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, we're how Lily claims to be a leftist when she is bootlicking Disney. I remember when we all knew that Disney was an evil fucking com company, but then Ron DeSantis fucked with them and suddenly we have to support them. No, <laughs> no, we do not. Both things can be bad. <laughs> uh that these symbols keep sprouting up around Alistair isn't just appropriative, that's not an actual word, it's also just plain old nonsensical. Once you know what- Okay, so what? Who cares? What does it affect? What does it impact at all in your enjoyment of the story? I don't think anyone's going to be like looking at Alistair and going, oh boy howdy, I, I want to practice voodoo now so I too can go to hell and become a, an, an overlord. If anyone is thinking that, then they need mental help. So, I, I, I just, ugh. is Lily James Summerton's friend, maybe? Oh god, I'm trying to keep up with both chats. <laughs> ugh. Is this the frog came out in 2009? Really? It was that 
that long ago? <laughs> I swear to God, 2009 is when the timeline broke. 2009 is when everything weird started happening. I swear. <laughs> See, Disney's voodoo depiction is arguably worse because the movie made more money. And it was also for impressionable children. Yeah, and like, 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 Dr. Fazilier, like, right out says, like, I'm a voodoo guy. You know? Also, it was Keith David, so are you not mad at Keith David for agreeing to play a voodoo practitioner when he's not one? <laughs> yeah, things can't happen just to be cool in cartoons. I, Princess and the Frog was mid. I'm sorry. Like, I really wanted to like it. I liked, I liked, like, I liked, uh, I liked Tiana's song about her restaurant that was all art deco, and it was like, it was like that one sequence from the new Fantasia, only better. But then all the other songs were kind of forgettable, and it seemed like the movie was just kind of rushing between songs and not really building a plot. It was like they were just in a race to get to the next big song set piece. And I fucking hated the animal sidekicks. They were so annoying. <laughs> they didn't need to be there. <laughs> Especially that fucking Firefly. <laughs> yeah, right, there were other songs? Exactly. Name me one other song besides Tiana's song about how she's almost there and Dr. Facilier's Oogie Boogie ripoff song. Name any other song from the fucking movie. You can't. You don't remember them. Because <laughs> they were nothing. <laughs> Okay, I guess Jay remembers them. Jay's probably watched this movie like like fifty times a day since you were you were six, probably Jay. <laughs> so, all right, fine, fine. Some of you do remember it. Well, what was my Mom Odie's song even fucking called? You know, no, Friends of the Other Side is Doctor Facilier's song, but no, fuck Ray, fuck Ray. He didn't need to be in the movie. I hate animal sidekicks. I hate talking animal sidekicks like that fucking goat in Wish. I hate it. Hell yeah, Snow Cake, that's what I'm talking about. Oogie Boogie Song is the superior version of Friends from the Other Side. Go watch Oogie Boogie Song. Friends from the Other Side just, like, ripped it off, especially in the imagery. <laughs> I am based. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm the Oogie Boogie Man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, Jay, Jay has sent me another, another voice sample. Okay, Jay, what? What do you want to say, Jay? Okay, size chat, this is your time. This is our time to rebel. Uh, I think we need to go on strike. We need to go protest against this uh, hater of peak. Uh, it's about time that we that we go out on strike, uh, form a protest. You're already throwing tomatoes at me. What else could you possibly do? <laughs> Jay, why am I letting you incite my chat? <laughs> right, let's just keep on with the video these symbols are for and why they're used you're left going what the hell are you even doing this would be like if you had a jewish character use a menorah as a coat rack that's just not what that's for the fact that 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 comparison makes no sense the but okay pilot alistair has these floating around him seems to suggest they're a part of him in some way which makes absolutely zero sense and suggests that alistair has tramp stamped property of baron samdi on his ass which give what if he has he belongs to somebody well, if that's the one who's got him, you know, chained up on a leash, you know, a little kinky, a little kinky. In his deal, he may very well have, but it's also suggested that this is his own demon magic. This, anyway, once the show came out... This well, obviously he got powerful by, like, eating other overlords. Like... And also, like, listen. The way series like this works, where the afterlife is, like, a way that no religion dictates it is. I think it's safe to assume that in the context of the story, most of the religions in the world are wrong and not accurate. It's kind of like The Good Place, you know, where, like, nobody has the afterlife entirely correct and no religion has it entirely right. It's like that. Because, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there are atheists and Buddhists in hell. It doesn't matter what you believed in life if hell is literally, objectively, in the, in the world of the story like this. <laughs> you know? If I lived in hell of a boss world and I died, I would be pretty surprised to pop up in hell, yeah? Because I'm an atheist. But it would happen in the hell of a boss world and the has-been hotel world, you know? Because in the, in the, in the, 
in the logic of that world, this is how the afterlife is. So everybody on Earth is wrong. <laughs> Hell yeah, good place. Good place is awesome. I kind of want to rewatch it. Actually, I was ta I was talking about it recently, and one of my friends said they never seen it, and I was like, no, <laughs> you have to. It's great. Right. I was referencing. I was referencing Jason. I was referencing Jason because he's the ultimate Florida man. That's what was happening. <laughs> the symbols had been chopped up and flipped around, and this seemed like a response to the fact that you're not supposed to use the symbols of a closed practice. Yeah. So they compromised. And the comparisons between the good place and Hellboss are crazy. Eleanor and Charlie should meet up. Oh my god. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine Charlie having to deal with Eleanor Shellstrop? <laughs> I'd actually pay to see that. That would be pretty funny. Uh, Eleanor would be like, oh, come on, girl, you really believe this bullshit? Come on! <laughs> oh, Jay has sent me another another comment. Oh, oh, yeah, and I also forgot that uh, she said that she didn't like Kingdom Hearts. She said that Kingdom Hearts was not a good story and that it was nonsensical, <laughs> so that's even more it reason is. to strike. Okay, goodbye, enjoy your stream. <laughs> Jay is always on my ass for saying Kingdom Hearts is mid and Princess and the Frog is mid. Hi, Skrill. It's just a react today. And Jay keeps sending me voice memos and making me play them on stream. <laughs> because he's able to DM me on Discord and he's abusing that power. <laughs> and now I'm getting covered in tomatoes. <laughs> And Again. Make no mistake, it was the correct decision. That's the point I'm trying laboriously to get to. This was a good decision. Okay, so then your entire section, this entire three minutes was moot then. <laughs> However, after consulting with a practitioner, it's not enough as they still have the same elements of Veves around them. So while it is- So? Again, you don't have to agree with it. But that doesn't mean people aren't allowed to have aspects of religion in fiction. Why don't you care about all the Christian stuff? I mean, here... Oh, consulted a practitioner. I'm sure Lily just, like, found someone online who says they're a voodoo practitioner to ask, probably. If that even happened. <laughs> but, so how about... You know, I, I, I was asking this about of people on uh, Twitter, too. About this whole voodoo thing. So there are a bunch of Christians pissed off about Hasbin Hotel. There are a bunch of Christians out there saying the show is satanic and and encouraging people to think the devil is good and hell is a good place and Amazon uh, should be boycotted for this and it's an insult to their religion. So how come we don't take those people seriously? Huh? How come we don't take the Christians complaining seriously? They're, they're a much larger group as well. And there are many more of them complaining about this show. I haven't seen a single actual voodoo practitioner complain about this show. Once. I've seen at least 50 Christians do it, though. So how come you don't care when it's the Christians? Uh, just saying. Yeah, because Christians complain about everything. I know, but I'm just saying, it's a little hypocritical, don't you think? I think the Christians are full of shit, too. But, if you're going to say one religion being insulted is an issue that needs to be resolved, then... Why doesn't it go for another religion? Either religions are all sacred and you have to respect people's beliefs or you don't. Pick one. <laughs> yeah, because when people think Christian, they think white. Exactly. They're thinking, oh, oh, voodoo is a religion of all those poor little POC that need me, the white savior who pretends to be a Native American to come in and save them. But, you know, those Christians are all just white people. Fuck them. <laughs> like again I don't like Christianity especially how, how it is in America because I'm an atheist and I'm very gay but I'm still not going to like you know but like yeah so what it's still people saying this is an insult to my religion so why do you take one ser so you don't take it seriously when a bunch of People are out there actually saying this is an insult to my religion. Instead, you choose to be insulted on the behalf of people you don't even know about a religion you don't even understand. 
because it gives you an opportunity to say, well, actually, that's cultural appropriation, and, and you need to do better. I, I'm important. My opinion's important. <laughs> uh, if all gay people go to hell, then hell is a better option. I mean, yeah. It's like the old Mark Twain co quote, you know, like, like, at least in hell, I'll be in good company. <laughs> Oh, now Skrill sent me something. Uh, now Skrill has a voice memo for me. Okay. So you say that he have a power to voicemail you on your Discord. Hmm. What a <laughs> great power to have. My friends are bullying me. <laughs> anyway. There you go. That was my black friend and my European friend, Lily. So there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I just don't. People who decide that they're gonna be the savior for someone else just drive me fucking crazy. Oh, uh, now Jay has another thing to say, apparently. <laughs> hey, Skrill, it's me, Jay. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, you're a very, you're a very dear friend to me. Um, <laughs> you know, I really do care about you, and uh, you know, you're you're a really good friend. I'm glad I'm glad I met you. You know, and Sai is there too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, 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 thank you so much, Jay. I feel so loved right now. <laughs> it is a course correction. It's not enough of a course correction, but it is the kind of course correction that would be made by someone who doesn't actually know what they're doing because they just took it from a Disney film. But it does show that Madrano pays attention to the important criticisms. She just doesn't know what to actually do about it. So I'm content to wait and see if there's further improvement on that front by season two. Actually, it's one more. <laughs> what needs to be improved? Nothing. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Lily. I can't, I, I've, I've almost forgotten what you're saying now because I get distracted by Skrill and Jay. <laughs> point here, and I, kn I know this isn't the case with Bonsomni, but it is here. The claim that Alistair is inspired by Dr. Facilier is put into even more scrutiny because they're nothing alike. Alistair is a charismatic schemer with the charisma to sway people and the strength to back it up. Facilier is a bumbling fool who failed himself into debt and who couldn't talk himself out of a cardboard box and for whom his primary victims spot him as a charlatan. Okay. He's a man constantly... <laughs> Well, yeah, fucking uh, Nazim's handler does, but Nazim's too much of a dumb himbo <laughs> to figure out he's being scammed. A cosmic get-rich-quick scheme, promising big things and constantly <clears throat> failing to deliver. He has more in common with a Ponzi schemer or a cryptocurrency enthusiast. He preys largely on the terminally gullible. First thing we see him do is... Okay, ca calling, calling Facilier a crypto bro. Uh, for the time period is, is kind of funny. <laughs> ...on an ignorant foreigner. You could totally see this guy hawking essential oils or NFTs. But for some reason, large sections of Disney fandom has convinced themselves that this- You're right, if Rebecca Sugar is doing this, Lou be screaming and making death threats right now, you're absolutely correct. This character is some kind of schemer, but he just isn't. He's not Hades. He's Megara. He has more in common with Serpentius trying to flirt. Because I'm having sex with everyone here! <laughs> In general, The Princess that wasn't and the Frog funny. is remembered <laughs> as this amazing film, and that's largely because it was the last big 2D animated Disney film. So Did you just want to talk about Princess and the Frog? Anything of worth out of it. I would know. Because I did. And Dr. Facilier is just something the film would have been better off without. He's carried by aesthetics and Keith... D and what, who, would the, who would the villain be then, Lily? What would the movie be without Dr. Facilier? The prince would never get turned into a frog. There would be no frog in Princess and the Frog. <laughs> I think one one time ages ago, I've never been able to find it again. When I when I still used Reddit, I think I wrote up a whole like a whole like idea of how to do Princess and the Frog completely differently, and I had it like Tiana found out her dad was like um like fifth in line for the throne of some like of some like fake Moroccan type country, and 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 like. Something had happened to the rest of the family, so she had to go investigate, and it turns out, like, all of her, like, distant relatives, uh, have been turned into frogs by some kind of spell, and she had to, like, sort that out. That would be- that would have been my idea. <clears throat> but, uh, because her turning into a frog, too, in the movie is a little stupid, because that never happens in the fairy tale. <laughs> At least I don't think so. Maybe in some versions, but... Mm, I don't know. I, I do think Princess and the Frog could have been better, but <laughs> that's just me. I do like a lot of it, though. 
David, a man who literally can- look at- look at the voodoo dolls on screen. Look at the fucking look- Yeah, Disney's version David, was so who... accurate. Disney's version was so accurate to voodoo. Ha, Lily. With these little fuck-ass voodoo dolls here. That aren't even, like, really a real thing. <laughs> Disney was so accurate and respectful when it came to voodoo, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, too. Like, uh, that's that's what I'm saying, Daniel, where, where in my version, if she if her dad was secretly, like, fifth in line to, like, some throne, but decided to go live, like, a more humble life, she would have been a princess already. And we wouldn't need some, like, shenanigans to technically, uh, the barest minimum, most technical way, make her a princess. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just seems a little stupid. There are things similar to voodoo dolls and voodoo, but they don't look like this, and they're not what people think they are in 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 a uh, in in actuality. Oh, there's ads. I'll wait for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just want to make a little money off of what I only put them on for thirty seconds. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I mean, I'll turn off the ads for the rest of the stream. Since they're bothering people. Let me just get into my little area here. Can I turn them off? Uh, or did I just accidentally run another one? I think I accidentally just ran another one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. Um. Oh, I, did I disable them? Um. Okay. Um, I don't exactly know where I can turn them off, because I don't know what I'm doing on Twitch, <laughs> but I will, I will try. I will try. Uh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna run an ad in seven minutes? I told it, like, conservative, like, don't run too many. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, I don't exactly know how to fix this. <laughs> That's my quick actions, but where are my like actions actions? Okay, whatever. We'll just continue the react. All right, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to set it. I'll try to. I'll try to set it so it, it isn't running ads so frequently next time. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Thank you for the stickers. <laughs> ...who literally cannot miss, no matter how bad the character is. And even with as generous an interpretation as that, there are going to be some people who just don't care. My comment section tried to pretend there was some double standard because I called out the show for demonizing voodoo, but not for the shit they say about Christianity. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I'm more or less cool with voodoo, but I have huge problems with Christianity. I don't like its imperial- So what? It's still a double standard, Lily! If you're gonna take one person- Complaining about the, re the way the religion is featured seriously, you should take the other one seriously, or take neither of them seriously. You know? <laughs> and again, I have not seen a single actual voodoo practitioner complain about Hasbin Hotel, but I have seen hundreds of Christians complain about Hasbin Hotel. <sighs> Ugh. Realistic history. I don't like how most of its stories portray God as an abusive parent at best, and a fascist tyrant at worst, and- Okay. Most religions are shitty. So what? So what? Either you can't insult anybody's religion, or you can insult all of them. You know? Why is there a double standard, Lily? <laughs> and then act like you're the weird one for pointing that out. And I love any story that skewers that. It's practically why I adore the Darksiders series. But in general- Darksiders? God, you really are a contrarian. If you think Darksiders is a good game, <laughs> what the fuck? Well, the ability to tell the difference between making fun of the most dominant religion in the universe and mining one that is just minding its- Yeah, right. <laughs> Can't wait till Lily finds out about the attitudes of the Greek gods, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, canonically, in their religious texts, might be a little worse than, uh, than, uh, the Abrahamic God. I mean, yeah, <laughs> might be, might be. 
the <clears throat> business for the aesthetic is a baseline bare minimum standard of human decency. This is punching up versus punching down, a basic- Uh-huh, so how is Alistair being implied to have been a voodoo practitioner in his life punching down? Especially when he's one of the coolest fucking characters in the entire show. How is it punching down, Lily? How? What's wrong with it? What is actually negative about this? I, w I, was, I was arguing with some idiot on Twitter the other day who was claiming that Fritz the Cat is, is a wonderful satire that it has no problems but Has Been Hotel is bad because Rosie has a New Jersey accent and is a cannibal, which means she's Jewish blood libel. <laughs> and I was like, <clears throat> okay. So watching the Cannibal Town episode of the show and seeing Rosie with her Jersey accent being a cannibal, what sane person is going to look at that and go, ah, yes, Jews are cannibals. Like, how is the show putting this idea in people's heads? How is her portrayal negative in any regard? And the only reason they keep insisting that Rosie is also Jewish, because they said Mimsy was Jewish, because Mimsy looks like a chicken with her little beak nose, and is fat, and owes money to people, so apparently that makes her a Jew, and apparently that makes everybody besides the people saying that racist. But Rosie, on her audition call sheet, they said they wanted her to sound like a Jewish mom. Okay? So I'm from New England, as you might be able to tell by the way I talk, <laughs> and the way I'm getting heated and my accent is coming out. What we call a Jewish mom here, like, doesn't even have to literally be Jewish. It's just an older woman who talks like this with a Jersey accent. You know, she's a little sassy, and she's always asking her son, when are you going to bring a nice girl home, son? She's always in everybody's business. You know, she's a little unself-aware. She might be a bit of a wine mom. That's a Jewish mom. You know, that is just them saying that is the type of voice they wanted. That is not saying the character is literally meant to be Jewish. It's just, you know, a lot of people from New Jersey and New York happen to be Jewish. Even if they're not practicing, they might be eth ethnically Jewish in some way or descended or culturally Jewish, basically. But they don't practice, you know. That's all it means. All it means is a, is a lady with a, with a sassy New Jersey accent. That's all they're talking about, you know. But of course, because she has a Jersey accent... And she's a cannibal that somehow is Jewish blood libel because once upon a time people spread propaganda about Jews being cannibals. As if propaganda hasn't been spread about almost every single group that's ever existed being cannibals. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. People, people are like... That's the other thing I don't understand. People are like... If Alistair is Creole, why doesn't he look black? It is like, do you know what Creole means? Creole people are from the Mediterranean, and they're they're descended from people that are a mix of African and European, and then a bunch of them settled in Louisiana. So when we have a large Creole population, they can look wildly different from each other despite being in the same ethnic group okay <laughs> is that wrong are we saying that race mixing is wrong now progressive people <laughs> yeah goat carnival if she's jewish why would that be inherently tied to her being a cannibal because apparently i guess a hundred years ago there was some German propaganda about Jews being cannibals which of course every single person watching has been hotel is going to be aware of right yeah uh, <laughs> I don't understand. These again, these I don't think I don't think the people who say these things even believe them. I think they just want to have a hot take. They just want something to complain about. They just want to take down a big creator and be you'll know, get their 15 minutes of fame as oh boy, you're the one who took down so and so. Even if so and so didn't actually do anything wrong. Because they see people taking down legitimate monsters. 
and then going, I want that kind of attention too. Let me find somebody to target. You know, Ugh, it's it's asinine. <laughs> and again, they just twist these things into like the worst possible thing they can think of, and then they just expose how racist they are. It's like, well, obviously you would think a Jew is a cannibal, right? No, I never thought that in my entire life. Why are you saying that? Or like, obviously Mimsy is Jewish because, you know, she's fat and has a beak nose and owes money to people. So she must be a Jew. It's like, um, I think, I think you might be the racist one here. I, you know, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. Let's keep watching. Concept that everyone needs to understand, and the only ones that don't are the ones who refuse to understand. And I'm sorry, but you are beneath me. Now on to Vaggy and Charlie. Lily, how can they be a part of any discourse? They're cute. That's exactly the problem. I'm putting this in the middle because it's the what? dumber of the three, but the discourse goes that Vaggy and Charlie are the straightest lesbians ever written. And no, I'm not going to show you who is saying that shit. Go find a drama streamer if you're that desperate for someone to harass. The idea okay. comes down to the fact that Charlie and Vaggy don't really have any friction. Their relationship is good. They're good to each other, and they have the same goals. And, and I feel this is the part that's tweaking a few people, their relationship is pretty vanilla. They're not as openly sexual with each other as other couples, or indeed other characters. Now, we normally cover okay. Animation aimed at a more G to PG audience on this channel, so regular viewers are probably shrugging and going, so? But if you're not familiar, there's a small section of the LGBT community that tends to get... What's the word? Tends to pout if LGBT characters are shown having a typical sex life. Now, this is a particularly complicated... Okay, I guess I kind of agree with this part, though. Like, yeah, lesbians are normal. <laughs> we don't exist as a hot fetish for you. So, yeah, I don't really have anything to say here, but... D did Lily just learn the word parasocial, though? She's been using it in, like, every single fucking video for, like, the last few months. <laughs> web of bullshit, so bear with me. But the idea is that because three quarters of a century ago, the LGBT community was largely oriented around hookup culture, because when being gay is a crime, one night stands with a go-to, so the gay community okay. was largely centered around bars and clubs, and so is it- So we're just going- we're just getting basic gay history lesson now? Because people said Charlie and Vaggy are boring? Because they're dumb? Okay. Like, I get, Lily just cannot- like, I, I swear to God, Lily just uses these videos as a vehicle to, like, just talk about random shit she wants to talk about instead of, like, dedicating one video to any of these topics. Yeah, I, I think Lily's gonna try to make the point that because gay culture used to be um, depicted as hypersexualized, people can kind of get sensitive about that. But... <clears throat> Ugh. It's intertwined with a certain degree of sex positivity, hence why BDSM and kink is part of Pride. Kind of. Now- Uh, BDSM and kink should not be part of Pride, hot take, but I will, uh, I will adamantly stand by that. Keep your fucking kinks to yourself in your fucking bedroom. Do not make other people participate in them against their will without their consent. Pride is not consent to be walking around in a fucking dog gimp outfit. Especially since many times children come to Pride because guess what? Many gay people are parents and there are teenagers who are gay who want to experience our culture. So no, that is not an opportunity for you to go around with your dick hanging out. This is why I stopped going to Pride, honestly. Because it just attracts the fucking weirdos. The fucking exhibitionist weirdos who just want everyone to see their ass and they don't actually care about our rights. You know? Because, you know, some gay people can also be, like, weirdo sex pests just like straight people. It's possible! <laughs> so what was your fucking text you had here, though? I gotta catch that. Conservatives of the era would often put kink and BDSM in the same degeneracy box as they did homosexuality. Yeah, well, yeah, kinksters do that, basically. They come over to us and say, hey, I like being paddled while getting whipped cream shoved down my throat in a dog mask. 
And people make fun of me for that. So that's just like being oppressed for being gay, right? We're the same, right? You guys are degenerate weirdos just like us, right? So we belong at Pride. No! Being gay is not inherently degenerate. Like, you're fucking shit. <laughs> you can do whatever you want in your own bedroom. Or in a sex club. Okay? But keep it there. Nobody needs to be participating in your shit. And it's worse when it's straight kinksters. It's worse when it's heterosexual kinksters. We're just like, well, I'm into like really gross degenerate stuff too. So that's just like being gay, right? Like, no, you're a degenerate. I'm just a lesbian. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Put your dick away. <laughs> Put your boobs away. You know, <laughs> go to a sex club if that's what you want to do. Couple looking for a unicorn. Oh, don't even get me started. I'll be called biphobic again for daring to say that bisexuals are sometimes homophobic and treat lesbians poorly. <laughs> anyway, God, I got everything is pissing me off today. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm probably gonna get canceled for a few things I said here. Whatever. Anyway, in some nations, even today, criminalize BDSM. Who the fuck cares? Uh. Pride is not LGBT specific, hence the presence of BDSM and drag. The fuck are you talking about? Okay, A, drag is a gay subculture, primarily done by gay men. So yes, BDSM is not inherently related to LGBT. Are you fucking stupid? Like, kinkster shit is not inherently related to LGBT. You are sounding like a conservative right now. It's like, oh, yeah, all that gay stuff. That's just like, you know, being a sex freak, right? It is not, Lily. Ugh. I can't even. See, I'm bisexual. People believe that those are a bisexual, pansexual, sex addict sluts. Well, no, I get that. I get that. But, you know, sometimes... Sometimes, bisexual women can be a little homophobic, and they don't treat their relationships with women as seriously as their relationships with men, and that is a thing we can talk about, but apparently me making a joke about that in the Steven Universe video was, uh, was, oh, biphobic, you know, because, you know, bisexuals can't be called out on their bullshit ever. <laughs> or we're being too mean. <laughs> uh, I'm getting very spicy on this stream. <laughs> Kind of. Now, this is the LGBT community's equivalent of the Westermark effect, i.e. it's capital A what? accurate without being capital T true. See, again, you, 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 you just threw out a phrase with no context, which I don't even, so I don't know what the fuck you're even talking about. You're showing a photo, but I don't know what this is. What is this, Lily? You need to explain things. True. <sighs> Hookup culture was a big part of the gay community back in the 40s and 50s, but it didn't mean there weren't gay up until the 70s, actually. ...people who wanted to just have boring romantic lives together. And it didn't mean- See, when you're instantly calling just being a normal fucking person boring, it's a bit of a red flag for me, Lily. You sound like one of those people who's like, well, if you're not whipping each other, you're having boring sex. You know, if you're actually having mutually pleasurable sex and not like- beating each other with a flail, or wearing leather masks, you're boring, you're vanilla, you know? You need to get a little bit more adventurous. It... <sighs> uh. Uh. <laughs> I don't know, Lily just seems to write scripts in, like, a fucking stream of consciousness. <laughs> like, with no editing. Lily, was this your first draft? <laughs> Like, you were supposed to be talking about Hasbun Hotel, and now you're going into, like, basic lessons about gay history while saying that BDSM is inherently part of LGBT, or at least belongs at Pride, which, no, it fucking does not. <sighs> you know, we don't need a bunch of fucking straight people in gimp suits encroaching on our territory <laughs> while we're just trying to celebrate, you know, our culture and ourselves after having been, like, suppressed for so long. 
mean there weren't gay people who weren't fucking a different person every other week. You mostly know about gay hookup culture because that was what made the fear-mongering news at the time. History doesn't record every single human being, and anyone outside mm -hmm. of the white, straight, cisgendered, middle-class male default tends to be treated like a monolith. And things that are the result of policy or environment are treated as culture. Oh, tends to get treated like a monolith except you just, like, stuck BDSM and LGBT together. And said, oh, all that degeneracy is all the same thing. That's exactly what fucking conservatives do. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Crappy. So somewhere between understanding that concept and the present, there's this murky, foggy area where people then go, it's not really gay if it isn't unrelentingly horny. You can see this in the kink at pride debate, a debate ostensibly about kink's place in pride. Could you stop showing me the stupid dog men who shouldn't be at pride to begin with? <laughs> who don't go to Pride, acting like a few sex-negative teenagers on TikTok represents- Oh, I hate the fucking term sex-negative, too. Fucking hate it. Because it's, it's, it's just- it's just as bad a term as pro-life. You're saying anybody who has a problem with, like, dudes in dog gimp suits getting off on everyone seeing them in those gimp suits, you know, is just a prude. Oh, you're just a prude. You're just sex negative if you think that's a bad thing. No, not sex negative. You know, sex is a good thing, but forcing other people in public to participate in your kink is not. And that is not sex negative to say so, you dumb motherfucker. Well, yeah, asexual people also exist. So, yeah, the term sex negative is just used by people who want to justify their fucking kinks and justify bothering gay people at Pride and calling anybody who has a problem with what they do a prude. Oh, you don't you don't whip each other while while dripping candle wax on each other? Well you're just sex negative. You're just boring and vanilla. Fuck off some weird anti-sex puritan uprising among Gen Z. Part of this is deriding any gay couple in adult media that isn't constantly horny for each other, like Gomez and Morticia, as basically being straight but in a gay way. So a gay couple that's just there, or a gay couple that doesn't have a lot of sex, or a gay couple that might be shy about being sexual in front of other people, these things- We don't- we can assume they have sex just because we don't see it. Yeah, they don't- they don't do a lot of- a PDA in front of other people. So what? A lot of couples are like that. Lots of couples aren't like on top of each other making out constantly. I mean, do you hang out with other people ever, Lily? <laughs> Most couples, straight or gay or whatever, are not crawling all over each other all the time and making out like fucking teenagers in the hallways of high school. Like, do you know other people besides your wife? <laughs> I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> things get written off. If you only watch LGBT YouTubers, you could be forgiven for- oh, fuck's sake, this is not a call I love, 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 okay, I don't care. ...that every LGBT <laughs> person is this whirlwind of open sexuality. That's not really true. Everyone comes in at different levels of openness and eagerness. People all exist on a spectrum of being sex favorable to sex ambivalent to sex repulsed. This is a spec- uh, I don't think you need a fucking chart for this. Yeah, some people have higher libidos, some people have lower libidos, libidos, and some people are asexual and don't have a sex drive. So, we don't need a fucking chart. It's not that hard to understand. <laughs> term largely used for ace people, but really it applies to everybody. Now, this is the important part. People who regularly touch the grass already know this. Everyone's sex life is different and everyone expresses- Lily, I don't think you touch grass. When was the last time you touched grass, Li Lily? <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to go for a hike in the woods, Lily. <laughs> differently. But people on the internet who don't go out. Ah, uh, Lily's lost on the maple syrup again. She's just deep in those maple syrup bottles. Fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, you forgot it was a Hasbro Hotel video. This is what every Lily video is like. We have experienced this. I mean, the reason I ended up becoming a YouTuber in the first place is because I just tried to react to a Steven Universe video and ended up having to give like a lecture on fucking Shoujo Kakumi Otena out of nowhere. <laughs> this is also why Lily is fun to react to. Like Lily's thought process is just so fucking confusing. <laughs> uh oh, here comes the super Keep chat. Talking send a five dollars super chat. Five dollars from Keep Talking. If you want the sexual stuff, look at the pinup pins they sell. 
It's what held up Helvia and has been for years. Yeah. And those pinup pins are fine. They're cute. You know, not everyone has to like saucy shit, but they're pretty harmless. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Can't touch grass because you live in a desert. Well, go, go, go touch some of that spiky grass or, or hug a cactus. There you go. <laughs> People who are online. Okay, look, I'm not going to pretend I'm not terminally online, because I am. I do go outside, though, and <laughs> touch sand. I, I saw somebody I saw somebody say slap soil one time. I think it's like a Filipino phrase. <laughs> they kind of like slap soil. <laughs> outside, have never had sex, and understand LGBT history only by observing it through a keyhole, believe otherwise. Okay, I agree. The, the bunch of virgins on the internet. Trying to tell gay people what to do. I have encountered that, yeah. <laughs> I compared it to the Westermark effect, and for good reason. The Westermark effect is a phenomenon wherein children who are raised together before the age of six will have their brains recognize them as siblings, and therefore... Oh, that's what that is. And weren't we just talking about Lily... ...seeing incest in Digimon... ...and writing a very shady story... About two nubile young sisters who are underage. What did you mean by this, Lily Orchard? <laughs> or won't try to flag them as a potential romantic partner. But if you've heard of it today, it's probably from some teenager arguing that childhood friends becoming lovers is unrealistic and basically incest because of the- I'm surprised you don't say that, Lily, to be honest. I'm surprised that's not one of your takes. It sounds like some stupid shit you would say. The Westermark effect, which just doesn't fucking work that way. It's a phenomenon. Okay, so did you have one Twitter argument with someone about this and you just had to put it in a video? It's like that old video I watched by that other channel where, like, you got into a fight with a My Little Pony artist because you were using her artwork without permission, and so you made an entire video about how artists are divas and they charge too much for commissions. We should maybe, re if I can find that, we should react to that one sometime. Or maybe I'll just play that guy's video, because it's really good. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard a single person say childhood friends and lovers is basically incest. Though it does sound like some stupid shit I would hear a teenager on Twitter say. Because recently, I, I heard somebody, this is a new thing they're doing now. If you, if you make... Saucy furry versions of the FNAF animatronics or the smiling critters? Apparently you're sexualizing dead kids. Because in the canon of those works, the animatronics are possessed by children's souls. So never mind you're taking the characters themselves, the animal characters themselves, and making them into separate furry characters. Never mind that. If you do that at all, you're apparently sexualizing dead kids, quote-unquote. And teenagers think they can just say this shit. They don't understand the gravity of what they're saying. I don't like to think kids are dumb a lot of the time. I try to give kids the benefit of doubt, but there are a lot of dumb kids out there. There's a lot of dumb people in general out there. Fucking Lily, you're in your 30s and you're this fucking stupid. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, d d yeah, uh, you guys missed it earlier. Lily was talking about Digimon. And apparently the the rec the director or whatever of the of the anime said something like Ty's sister meeting his Digimon she didn't know about and he was going on adventures with without her is kind of like the wife meeting the mistress. Haha, <laughs> isn't that funny? So he was just like comparing it to the awkwardness of the wife meeting the mistress. He wasn't saying that was literally the case. I, I compared it to calling two people acting like an old married couple. It's not like you literally think they're fucking married. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or that they should be married. <laughs> uh, God. I hurt. I hurt. No one understands my pain. <laughs> observed when children are raised to believe they are siblings. Not a permanent proximity alarm that everyone six and under has to- Who- How did we get here? How did we fucking get here? From idiots online saying that Vaggy and- and Charlie might as well be straight because they're not like- they're not like scissoring each other on screen constantly. And I said scissoring isn't even realistic. I just- it's just, it's just funny to say. <laughs> to all their class. 
proper term is tribbing. <laughs> Complicated and quite interesting subjects get boiled down to something short, quippy, and wrong with which to weapon. Uh, uh, well, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about anymore. Nice against something <laughs> or someone you already don't like. LGBT history is complicated and interesting and shouldn't be used as a cudgel for you to take out your issues on a sex shy couple in hell. But I don't even blame the idiot. They're not even sex shy. How are they sex shy? Because we, the audience, don't see them fuck on screen and they don't kiss each other on the mouth in front of other people. That makes them sex shy. How? You don't know what they do in the bedroom. It's like you wouldn't know what any given couple you know does in the bedroom. Unless you think you should know. Do you think, like, do you think all your friends are kinky and, like, openly talk about their sex lives with each other? That'd be fucking weird. <laughs> How are they sex shy? Because they're not constantly groping each other. Again, this is why I fucking hate the term sex negative. It's like, if you if you were just, like, a decent, normal person and not a degenerate, suddenly you're sex negative. Or, you know, we just know there's a time and a place for things and we don't try to force other people to go along with our sex talk. And, like, because, you know, it's always said by fucking people who get off on making other people uncomfortable with sex talk, too. It's always said by people whose kink is, like, embarrassing other people. You know, like, fuck off. <laughs> you, you do not have, like, a right to anybody else's boundaries. <laughs> they don't want to tell you about their sex life. They don't fucking have to. You know, that doesn't mean they're sex shy or sex negative. It means it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> oh, Christ. And yeah, I'm sure there are people like, me and anyway, you see Vaggie and Charlie have hot, steamy sex on scene. You know, how could they be lesbians unless, unless they're, uh, unless they're, like, you know, fucking porn fodder for me? Ugh, Christ. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, chat seems to be mostly in a, in a, in agreement. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to edit this one together, huh? I'm still working on the last one. Because <laughs> the audio is so bad. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, eventually, eventually I'll cut these two down. Well, eventually. It's not gonna be as uh, crazy as when I did, like, the, the SU one in, like, a week or two. <laughs> I have other things to do! I, I, I have paid art to do, and I'm gonna continue switcheroo, and I have so many things to do. We're halfway through. Whoa! We're halfway there! <laughs> Ah, live it on a prayer! <laughs> for this. Millennials have been pushing this attitude about LGBT history, where it's a forum weapon first and something to study second, for you. Do you think gay millennials don't exist? We don't, like, I don't think of my own sexual orientation as, like, a way to argue with people. Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> Lily, you are also a millennial! You're in your 30s, right? You're a fucking millennial. Shut up. Years. <laughs> LGBT people are complicated, and if an adult series wants to have their leaning couple be chill and relaxed and call each other sweetie pie, then they should be allowed to. Besides, if we're gonna call anything straight but in a gay way, it would have to involve constant negging, expressed hatred being relabeled as love, a feeling of obligatory inevitability, and romanticized abuse to the level worthy of a boomer comic. <laughs> so are you saying straight couples are inherently abusive? And negging? Or you just want to fucking bitch about... About fucking... What is this called? Shira again. <laughs> Thank you for the Phoenix super chat. Phoenix Fire sent a $1.99 super chat. $1.99 from Phoenix Fire. We're living on a prayer. I don't think Lily forgot Charlie is bi. Lily keeps saying LGBT, the entire acronym. So... Which I, I kind of hate that, honestly, because when someone's like, wow, this this is an LGBT character. It's like, wow, they're all four of them at once, huh? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> can you just say lesbian or bisexual or transgender or, or gay? Can you, can you say those words? Look, I'm going to be honest. I also hate the Q word. Okay, listen. People have a right to not want to be called the Q word. It was a slur. It was a pretty bad slur, and we, we got people to stop using it, and all of a sudden, we're all being called queer again, and I don't like it. Queer means weird. 
I'm not weird for being homosexual. I am weird for many, many, many other reasons. <laughs> so, like, you can use it if you want, but don't call other people that. In fact, going back to the argument I had with the Fritz the Cat person, because in the movie they were praising, there's, like, a really bad, like, black woman prostitute stereotype. And this is a person who spends all day bitching about Vivzy Pop and Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss. They spend all day, it's Hell of a Receipts, by the way. They spend all day sitting on Twitter, complaining about how problematic Vivzy Pop is and calling Rosie blood libel because he's a cannibal with a New Jersey accent. And this person is saying, but Fritz the Cat is really good because of this fat black prostitute in it. That's a complete stereotype. And then somebody else entered the conversation and, and said to me with their full fucking chest, and I think they were 17 years old, so of course they're fucking stupid. They said with their whole chest, well, you, as a queer person, should know having to hypersexualize yourself for straight men. I was like, the fuck did you just say to me? Did you just imply because I'm a lesbian? That I am an active and willing participant in the homophobia surrounding straight men fetishizing lesbians? Did you just fucking say that to me? Oh, but because I'm queer, I should be familiar with that. You see why I have a problem with this? It's like Zoomers are just bringing back a lot of old homophobia and they don't even fucking realize it. Ugh. I'd rather just be called a lesbian. Can you just call me a lesbian? <laughs> you know? Could you, could you not call me names? You know? Like, it, the queer wasn't a like, cute little kitschy term we, we, we used, you know? Like, during the AIDS crisis, the mantra was no tears for queers. You know? They were happy that gay men were dying. <laughs> so maybe a lot of older people don't want to fucking hear that word. <laughs> But all these stupid little Zoomers just go, but it's been reclaimed! It's been reclaimed! It's like, you're not even old enough to remember what it was a fucking slur. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> well, yeah, horny angel, but like I just said, queer, literally, the word queer means strange. So people would call gay and bisexual and transgender people that to say they are strange and aberrant. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe why some people don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> Again, you want to use it for yourself? Fine. I don't care. But don't think that gives you permission to call every single gay person you see that word. You know? Fuck. <laughs> Conversely, where the problems with Alistair's appropriation with voodoo is a real problem with the show, the claims that Angel's abuse is glorified or fetishized are just straight up nonsense, and speaks to how Twitter has gotten dumber and dumber over the years. Some people call this the death of media literacy, but I'd hesitate before doing that. Nine times out of ten, complaints about people's media literacy is just complaining that they had a different take than you did. No, Lily, you are very media illiterate. We have evidence. That you probably didn't even watch the Steven Universe movie when you made your video on it. Because you went by a bunch of cringy, edgy Reddit fan theories about Spinel being suicidal. And about Steven having mind control powers. That isn't even in the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, and you didn't watch pool hopping! <laughs> pool hopping! <laughs> anyway. Now that's actually controlling my, uh... <laughs> Whoops! Oh no, I went all the way back in the video, no! Hotkeys, why? Why do you do this to me? Where were we? I see Korra. That's too far then. I see Steven Universe AGAIN! <laughs> Alright, um, um, this looks about it. Fuse us to take a serious situation seriously, because it's too busy deriving sick thrills from it. Angel's pain and mis- Let's see, I do hate how LGBTQIA friendly corporate advertising has them calling people the Q slur. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Jer Bear sent a two dollars super chat. Two dollars from Jer Bear. The death of media literacy was Lily's <laughs> SUV. Yes. Yeah. See, that's the other problem I have with this is now straight people are very comfortable just throwing the word queer around, and they think they can just call any LGBT person they want queer. I have a problem with that. Like that's kind of a that's our word situation, but I don't even want to use it for myself. You know. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. But yeah, that was a response to no tears for queers. It was throwing it back in the face of society. That wasn't like, yeah, we're totally weird. We're weirdos, you know, hooray. But it's like Lily thinks kink belongs at Pride. So maybe Lily is one of these people who thinks LGBT people should just be weirdos. Except you don't like the Q word either. So I don't understand you, Lily. <laughs> yeah, really, really don't like how comfortable straight people are with throwing the word queer around. Uh, yeah, don't like that. Misery remains the focal point of the episode, and later interactions with Valentina oh, wait, bring abusive was... relationships and the okay, opinions think... on people. As we all know by now, there Angel's abuse is depicted mostly realistically, right down to the mental fog and cognitive dissonance. Angel is trapped in a contract he can't escape, and is routinely fed drugs and sexually assaulted for Valentino's profit and amusement, simultaneously covering abusive relationships and the abusive hellscape of unregulated capitalism that sex workers have to live in. It's so realistic, in fact, that it's actually... Well, also, the sex trade is terrible, and this is a very good example of that, and I will stick by it. I don't care if some people agree, disagree with me on this. The sex trade is not a good thing. It, it, th this whole sequence shows that you see the glitz and the glamour on the outside, but the inside is nothing but exploitation and abuse and drug addiction. <laughs> you know? Really triggering. While watching that episode, I had to stop halfway through and take a breather because I was starting to have flashbacks. There's nothing fetishistic or glory. All right, Lily, Lily is like, oh, I totally relate to this. I was definitely a prostitute, a high, a high level prostitute at one point. Sure you were, Lily. Terrified <laughs> about any of this. It's all viscerally uncomfortable and difficult to watch. This is a far cry from actually fetishistic material, which refuses to take a serious situation seriously because it's too busy deriving sick thrills from it. Angel's pain and misery remains the focal point of the episode, and later interactions with Valentino show that it's the continued presence of people he cares about that even gives him the will to openly defy Valentino in the first place. Fuck off, Val. Yeah, Deb in here is like, I hate people trying to rebrand sex work as 100% empowering. Yes. Most prostituted people want to get out. It's not a fun little job. And I kind of hate how, like, people who do, like, stripping and camming in their first world country, you know, in relatively safe conditions, will compare themselves to, like, impoverished pos prostitutes in third world countries by calling it all sex work. Like, no, that is not the same. <laughs> that is really not the same. <laughs> Excuse me? I said fuck <clears throat> off. I may have to put up with your bullshit. Yeah, throw you throw tomatoes at Valentino, everybody. Pimps suck. Talking to? Now, here's where I need you all to follow me on this. I can understand why people would think this is worse than it is. Stories about sexual abuse in particular tend to dance around the issue and speak about it in vague tones. Closest parallel I can think of is the Lisa series. Brad and Lisa are explicitly shown to have an abusive father, but with Lisa, it's heavily implied that Mark party is sexually abusing her and forcing Okay, so like Yeah Sometimes Media Will be more Low-key about that sort of subject Because it's a very sensitive subject, Lily It's like how in Silent Hill 2 You have all the information you need to gather That Angela was raped by her father they never say it out loud, but you look at her behavior, you look at the monster she encounters, you look at the imagery in her version of Silent Hill, and you can pretty easily put it together what happened to her. You know, they don't need to show it on screen. They don't need to have Angela stand there talking in therapy talk about her experiences, it, especially since she's too fucked up to probably even understand that <laughs> like, oh. Sing Brad to take yeah, how, how dare something be classy and not show someone being raped on, on screen to tell you that they've been sexually abused part in it although the abuse is portrayed directly the sexual abuse is never portrayed outright furthermore why do you want the sexual abuse to be portrayed out why why do you want to see a little girl getting molested on screen Lily is that pertinent to the story and to your understanding of that's what's happening? Do you have to see a little girl get raped on screen to understand what's happening, Lily? Why do you want to see this so badly? <laughs> you know, this is the kind of shit you go after people on Twitter for. Oh, I like has been, if you're asking me. Yes, this is the author of Stockholm, let's not forget. This is the author of Stockholm. You know... The, uh, the fan fiction where 
intersects, quote unquote, Rainbow Dash, who is just a Futanari, uh, is so horny she can't stop fucking teenage girls because she has a penis. That's some really good fucking implications there. <laughs> We're coming out of a haze of almost 15 years of animation being really cagey with information about characters and their relationships, cloaking absolutely everything they can in metaphor and allegory. And or, you know, what do you want, Lily? Do you want a show where a character just walks on screen and stares directly into the camera and just reads off their whole character description to you? Because that kind of sounds like that's what you want. I am the computer nerd of the group. I have secret issues with my parents and then he walks off screen and the next person comes up and says i'm a vulnerable woman and i have sexual assault in my history keep watching the show to find out more you'll see me be raped on screen <laughs> you know <laughs> like, what do you want this is how stories work you can't just have your characters announce how they feel that makes me feel angry <laughs> She written a Lolita-inspired relationship? Okay, you, you'd have to show me proof that Lily took inspiration from Lolita directly. Uh, but if she did, that's pretty fucking bad. Because, <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't- Yeah, though, I wouldn't expect Lily to not understand the point of an unreliable narrator. <laughs> if Lily can't even follow basic storytelling. <laughs> And it's less because they have to, and more because of this idea that not saying things outright is better writing. I've talked about this in the past. It is better writing. It is. You you can't just have characters stare into the camera and just announce all of their... See, and again, I was saying, I think this is why Lily likes Angel Dust. Because Angel, like, literally just sits there with, with Husker going, I have to act like this because it's the only way to feel better and not feel like I'm, I'm nothing, you know? And maybe Valentina won't like me anymore if I act like this. You know, he just outright says his motivation out loud. It kind of annoys me. <laughs> but that's why Lily likes it. Because, because fucking Angel does just announces his characterization. <laughs> you confused what Lolita is? Lolita is, a, is an old book. Lolita is an old book that is uh, an unreliable narrator written from the perspective of this awful pedophilic man who kidnaps his own stepdaughter for nefarious reasons after her mother dies. And a lot of people misinterpret that book, but the whole point of the book is the main character is not a good person, but we are hearing things from his point of view, but you're supposed to be able to put together that he's a monster and he's bullshitting you about a lot of things. That's what an unreliable narrator is. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lolita kind of became the name of the fashion as well, which is a little problematic, but I don't really blame people for that. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, Lily doesn't want to think. Lily just wants a show to, like, just... To just have the characters stand there talking about what their character is, and then having bland conversations, I guess. ...asked about how fandoms, and even writers to an extent, get these absolutist ideas about writing in their heads, about how certain tropes are inherently better than others, and certain ideas are better than others. So the thought process goes, if your story merely has these tropes, then it's automatically good. That's like the opposite of bad media literacy. People have been so primed by the last generation of angry reviewers to think that the existence of a trope is in of itself bad. You know, like, oh, this show is using this trope in this trope, therefore it is bad because it is using tropes. That is not how anything works. Tropes are tools. You know, they're tools with which to tell a story. It's all about how you execute it. We have been telling the same stories for all of human history. They're just in different fonts. They're different, just in different skins. What matters is what you can bring to it, you know? I mean, yes, we have seen stories like Angel Dust's in media before. Yes, but the context is different. The character is different. The, the purpose of the show is different. The style is unique, y you know? <laughs> Everything is tropes. Writing is tropes. Writing is cliches. Writing is contrivance. It's just how well you hide it. All you have to do is make the audience believe in the world and the characters. 
It doesn't matter if it's unoriginal. You know, you could make the most unoriginal story in the world. But if you bring a unique spin to it, people are going to like it. And people want to be told the same stories. You know, like when a story doesn't end the way you think it should have, don't you get mad? Don't you get mad when a tragedy suddenly pulls a happy ending out of its ass? Or a happy show suddenly pulls a tragedy out of its ass? Yeah, makes you mad, doesn't it? Because you know, you know that's not how the story is supposed to go. You are, people are, ex like, people who just want to subvert things just to surprise the audience, that's why they always end up fucking it up. Because they're just like, well, I can't have the expected ending, so I have to surprise people. But people want the expected ending. It, it, what matters is how you get there and what you give them throughout it. So don't be afraid if your story isn't exactly original. Don't be afraid if you're using a trope or a cliche. What matters is how you and your, and your unique perspective and your unique style and your unique vision, what that brings to it. All right, I'm going to give you guys fucking positive writing tips right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh... God, I'm probably going to have to feed the animals soon. The dog is already kind of huffing at me, but we'll go on for a little bit longer. Stop Execution it! Execution <laughs> is completely removed from the equation. I got hit right Oh, you're just going to sit there harking up something on my floor now, Sadie? Thank you. All right, hang on, let me go check on her. <laughs> hey, you all right? Hey. Hey. I think she swallowed her spit the wrong way. She takes after me. <laughs> Oh yeah, angel dust is a is a is a slang term for cocaine. That's yeah, <laughs> tells you something. In the face with this, people were angry when I reviewed the show positively on the basis that both it and Steven Universe are about redemption at their core. So me calling one Steven Universe is not about redemption at its core. For fuck's sake, Lily. It's about how most problems come down to lack of communication, and that if you actually consider somebody else's perspective you can begin to reconcile the problem instead of just like beating them up <laughs> su is about how you should talk to people and find out where they're coming from and explain your own point of view to them and then you guys can get on the same page that's how most adults handle conflict <laughs> uh no nah, it's not slang for pcp it's slang for cocaine don't ask how i know that uh but yes, you see, this is, this is the problem with me, though. Unlike Lily, I cannot perform scripted. I have to be off the cuff. I would love to give you guys writing advice, but I can't build a lesson in my head. You guys just kind of have to poke at me and see what falls out. <laughs> One good and the other trash makes no sense. One person went as far as to claim that I only liked the show because it had lesbians in it, which makes no sense because Steven Universe... I believe that, but... <laughs> ...has more gays than filler episodes. The reality is, uh -huh. they're both about redemption, but one of them is fundamentally about people wanting to change themselves. <sighs> Hasman Hotel isn't even about redemption. Not really. I don't understand the people who don't... <laughs> what kind of breed is Sadie? Oh, she's a Labradoodle. <laughs> very, very poodly, though. She's like 75% poodle. She's got like... She's got like the poodle... Atti she's got like the poodle attitude and the poodle smarts, but she's kind of got the yellow lab personality. <laughs> <laughs> but what was I saying? Yeah. So even in the pilot, even in the pilot, it was clear that Charlie's hotel idea was stupid. It was probably not going to work. And nobody believed in it. And that is the entire point of the show. We, the audience, are also supposed to not believe in her redemption project. We're supposed to think she's a little flighty and a little naive and a little over her head and a little overambitious. And then at the very end, Serpentius ends up in heaven. And all of us are like, holy shit! It actually worked! We're supposed to be surprised. We're supposed to underestimate Charlie like everybody else. And yeah, and that is the point. Charlie's friends and family, who you're currently throwing tomatoes at, Charlie's friends and family believe in her. They don't necessarily believe her hotel idea is actually going to work or is actually going to be viable, but they believe in her. And she has brought all of these people together by just being who she is, by just being this endless font of hope and positivity <laughs> in the middle of hell. <laughs> that is the comedy of her character, but 
by the end, it's also played kind of seriously because now she has all of these people around her who who cherish her and want to be part of her life and want to help her with her project. Even they, even if her project is probably not going to work, they want to support Charlie. <laughs> you know, that is the point. And the point of Steven Universe is most problems come down to lack of communication. That is literally it. White Diamond had to have her mind changed. White Diamond didn't have to be redeemed. She had to have her mind changed. It's literally called Change Your Mind. And what does the last song say? I don't need you to respect me. I respect me. You know? But if you could get to know me, maybe you would change your mind. It's right there in the fucking song, Lily. <laughs> it's not about redemption. It's about communication. <laughs> while the other keeps knocking on people's doors like a pushy Jehovah's Witness. But because execution has been completely scrubbed from the My equation, it's not considered. Lily, I think that might just be SU Stan's coping. I said follow me on this, I'm not done! Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait, wait a minute. Lily was doing SU slander while I was just sitting here thinking very deeply about my own life right now <laughs> and what I'm doing. But me calling one good and the other trash makes no sense. One person went as far as to claim that I only liked the show because it had lesbians in it, which makes no sense because Steven Universe has more gays than filler episodes. The reality is, they're both about redemption, but one of them is fundamentally about people wanting to change themselves, while the other keeps knocking on people's doors like a pushy Jehovah's Witness. But because execution has been completely scrubbed from the equation, it's not considered. Lily, I think that might just be SU Stan's coping. I said follow me on this, I'm not done! Anyway, I'm because the presence you. of tropes and writing dogma matters more to people than- Okay, you're not talking about Steven Universe still, so, like... Who... Who in... Who in Hasbin Hotel wants to change? Angel Dust was just crashing on the couch of the hotel, not taking anything seriously. And yeah, he's changed a little bit to be, you know, more helpful and has, has, has grown in his friendship with Charlie. But Angel Dust isn't like, isn't like, like eager to get into heaven or anything. He's not like, oh boy, I really need to redeem myself now. Husk isn't looking to go to heaven. Husk knows he can't. His soul belongs to Alistair. Nifty is, I don't know what the fuck she's doing. She's making roach crowns and, and stabbing mice with sewing needles. I don't think she's out there saying, I need to change. <laughs> and obviously, Vaggy doesn't want to go back to heaven. <laughs> Why the fuck would she? Charlie can't go to heaven. She's a hellborn. Lucifer can't go to heaven and he wouldn't want to. So who in Hasbin Hotel is out there wanting to change? Like Pentius went along with her redemption project, but he's Pentius. He's kind of he's kind of gullible and suggestible and leadable. Anyway, sorry, somebody had a highlighted uh, message in Twitch. Have you seen the video of the two writers tearing apart Lily's writing advice video? Yes, I've watched that like three times. <laughs> I watched that at least once before I even reacted to Lily, so. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, seriously just reacted to Lily the, the, the first time on a whim, and then you all decided to give me all of this attention. So now I'm, gonna, now I'm just, in, now I'm just, you know, now I'm just uh, invested, and I, I have, <laughs> I'm being enabled by you people. <laughs> but we're all having fun, right? We're all, even if I'm going on some angry rants this time about, about people being stupid about the LGBT community. Ugh. I, st I still can't believe that somebody said this video was going to be boring. Yeah, Pench just, just wanted friends. He had to make the egg boys just to have somebody to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> And the execution of it, the fact that Hasbin Hotel ignores the rule about subtlety and allegory is what quirks people's brains. Because ignores the rule? What? Ooh. Are you saying, like, again, I think Lily just likes has been because characters, like, say their motivations out loud and explain them to the audience because the show just doesn't have time for anything else. But there are allegories in has been Hotel. has been Hotel is an allegory. <laughs> I will explain how. So has been Hotel is an allegory for how People on the margins of society often get pushed into bad places and bad situations 
where they're further vilified and told they're garbage. And that's what makes it really hard for them to climb out of those bad situations. Because they're already told, well, you're weird, you're gay, you're a prostitute, you're an old drunk who lost all his stuff to gambling, you know, so you don't deserve anything. Jer Bear <laughs> sent a $2 super chat, $2 from Jer Bear. Metaphor exists because everyone internalizes diff. Yeah. But it's like such a simple metaphor. Like, yeah, hell is kind of representative of how people on the margins of society get shoved into bad situations and are kept there because society continues to marginalize them and vilify them. So, yes, there is allegory here, you fucking idiot. <laughs> You're not Tolkien. You can't just say, I hate allegory. <laughs> Only Tolkien is allowed to say that. <laughs> You when you can, when you write Lord of the Rings, Lily, you can say you hate allegory. <laughs> Cause subtlety and show don't tell is burned into people's critical spectrum. There's an idea that you would only actually make people experience a character's abuse if there was a reason beyond storytelling. This isn't show don't tell isn't it, it's not show don't tell isn't a hard rule, but it is good advice. Like don't just don't just info dump in your story. You have to deliver information in a narratively satisfying way. Instead, like, if you're just if you're just having the cliff notes of all your characters as your book, that's gonna be pretty fucking boring to read. You getting ads? Oh, sorry. You getting the weird McDonald's ad? Hey, hey, Kiko Rasai, we're about mm, we're about third away through the video. Lily has pissed me off on a very variety of subjects that are not um. Uh, not even fucking related, really, <laughs> as usual. Uh, we had to go over how, like, no, kink doesn't belong at Pride, Lily Orchard. Uh, and your weird focus on incest is making me start to worry, <laughs> Lily Orchard. Uh, I'll have to listen back to this myself to find out what I was even getting angry about. I'm already getting, we're already getting a little burned out. Uh, yeah, we're finally actually talking about fucking Hasbun Hotel an unfair conclusion to draw. I've drawn it myself, particularly when talking about how The Legend of Korra is more interested in showing Korra writhe for the camera than exploring how her hardships affect her as a person. But it's precise. That's what the, like, the entire third fucking season was about! That was what the- She was in a wheelchair after that! And had to have a long recovery! Haverlock <laughs> sent a $10 super chat. $10 from Haverlock. Tolkien hated allegory specifically because he believed it was the author butting into the reader's interpretation of a story. Lily hates it because thinking is hard. Yeah, that's fair, Haverlock. But also, I think Tolkien got really annoyed at people saying, well, Lord of the Rings is obviously a World War II allegory. And he was like, no, it's fucking not. I'm just... <laughs> Thank you for the Lily Swear Jar. I don't think that actually counts here. But, but yeah, Tolkien was like, no, I'm literally just trying to write, like, Write like folklore for the British Isles. This is not a fucking World War II allegory. Go to hell. <laughs> now, you could argue that Tolkien had a lot of influences from his experiences in World War One that may have unconsciously gotten into his work. Uh, you know, like the, like the swamp full of the dead elves was kind of like him seeing, you know, trenches, flooded trenches full of dead bodies in World War One, etc. But now I'm getting off topic. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, but Korra, whole, whole third season of Korra, if I recall correctly, she starts off in a wheelchair and has to learn to walk again, and then she goes on an anonymous journey around the world to, like, find herself. So I think that affected her pretty fucking hard, Lily. You know, did you not watch the last two seasons? They're the best one. Precisely because there isn't a dealing with the trauma section of the story and how this has all changed the <laughs> fucking third season! Like the entire third season! <laughs> the way Cora thinks that I get that impression. Has been hotel. Is it fourth I'm thinking of? Because I thought fourth season was Zelda Williams being evil, being, being, uh, being Earth Kingdom Stalin. <laughs> and I thought season two was when Cora was like on her journey. And she fought the, the wind guy, the new wind guy who broke out of prison. I guess it's been a while since I've seen Korra, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, fine, fourth season. Fourth season, then. Christ. 
Oh yeah, because it was the wind guy and his gang that tied her up. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. It is the fourth season I'm thinking of. It is the fourth season. But the entire fourth fucking season was about how this this affected Korra. So I guess Lily just stopped at season three and then just assumed it was never covered. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Lily is the type of person that orcs are an allegory for black people. Yeah, right. Lily sounds like that kind of progressive who's actually really racist. <laughs> It's normal to forget things you get old. Dude, I have had the memory of a sieve, like, the, my entire fucking life. <laughs> Conversely, shows Angel's abuse and then shows him dealing with it. And while I'm usually one to bang the fandoms or idiots drum, here they're only using the critical theory that other people have spent years telling them to use. I wouldn't actually be surprised if people got on a story's case for having characters speak frankly about their problems after decades of the Farfield Foundation drilling show don't tell into people's heads. On an you can have characters have heart to hearts about their problems while also doing show don't tell. Like, okay, not to not to bring up Better Call Saul again, as I do sometimes. Better Call Saul is one of the best shows for show don't tell. Even if you're not interested in the plot or whatever, I would suggest watching it because the visual storytelling in that show is just primo. Like, when I was watching, I was like, dude, I can't even, like, draw while I watch this. I have to actually watch the screen, because so much of it... What are you egging Rosie for? <laughs> so much of it. Oh my god, why are you egging Rosie? Who even does that, you know? I'm gonna call your mom. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Better call Sai, yeah. But yeah, Better Call Saul has amazing visual storytelling. But there is one scene with Mike Ehrmantraut opening up to his, his uh, daughter-in-law about, you know, killing the cops that killed his son. And he directly talks about it in that scene, and it's great. But also, you see the, the, you see the facial expression on the actor, and the way it's framed, and that also tells you things. But yeah, so much of Better Call Saul is, like, such good visual storytelling and such good, like, camera framing. Like, I say you can learn about a... You can learn a lot about comic books, comic book paneling from Better Call Saul. Because you could take a lot of stills from that show... And you could just make them a comic panel and they would work. I swear. I'm gonna I'm gonna like go back through that show one day and I'm gonna like go do studies. Anyway, I just noticed it's 436. I gotta go feed the animals. So I will be right back. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. It, uh, slap. Good timing. Uh, it started raining out. I realized my car windows were down. Clearly, this is somehow Lily Orchard's fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, you put the sussy sigh over my sigh face. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun with that. I guess this is just gonna have to be a save. So, should I, uh, should I have the stickers on for I Wanna Hug That Gator tomorrow? What do you guys think? <laughs> Or would that be too much? <laughs> uh, all right, we'll leave, we'll leave them on for I want to hug that gator. I'll have to see if I can record the screen separately, though, for when we <laughs> make VODs of Wani. Nah, I might, I might turn them off for Wani just because, uh... Hype train, oh shit, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? What's happening? <laughs> I don't think I have exclusive emotes for you guys, so, um... <laughs> uh, okay, let's keep watching the video. Now that I've freshened up a little bit and fed the pets. On a daily basis, I get messages on Tumblr asking me how to establish characters as not straight or not cis without just saying it outright. And I always say the same thing. Say it outright, you coward. It speaks of how this aversion to speak- Who the fuck asks you for writing advice, Lily? I don't believe that happens. Speaking about anything in plain frank oh my terms- has Oh my god, thank you guys for, for riding the hype train on Twitter. On Twitch, rather. I, I'm not exactly sure what it does, but okay. <laughs> soaked into people. In fact, here- Yeah, Lily has a Tumblr. Lily, Lily blocked me on Tumblr before I even released the SU video, so I know she knows about it. It's the epitome of where just being direct is king. There's an- Oh, you finally show a warning! You finally show a warning! After you've been talking about 
kink at pride and talking about sexual assault and sexual abuse and how you you think Lisa would have been really improved by seeing a little girl get raped on screen. After all that, now you're showing a warning. Do you fucking edit your scripts? Are these all first drafts? Seriously. <laughs> Me of where just being direct is king. There's an old sexual abuse PSA called the Dunkel Ziffer Tentacle, which uses a. The fuck are we? <laughs> Your examples of things are just. Did you just want to talk about sexual assault PSAs and and kids raised together acting like siblings and incest today? But you you needed you needed traction on YouTube, so you slapped Has Been Hotel in there. Like, why do you just be a streamer like me, where you can just talk about random shit and people come and listen to you for some reason? A slithering creature that looks like a hairy dick to represent oh, I know sexual what this abuse, is. and it's very I remember effective. This. Yeah, it is. And guess what? They don't fucking say it out loud at any fucking point, Lily. Yeah, this PSA is all about how, you know, childhood sexual abuse will affect someone their entire feel life. You this thing crawling on you as you watch the PSA. Yeah. And the way sexual abuse is so intrusive to your life is represented by that. The moment it starts crawling, the only thing you can think of is, fuck, it's on me again. I'm not even paying attention to what's being said. It's just, it's just on me and I hate it. Ugh, it's mm -hmm. repulsive. And if the allegory here wasn't thin and see-through as you could possibly get, it wouldn't be as repulsive. And as such, it wouldn't be as effective. That... It's still an allegory, Lily. At no point in the life of this woman we are being shown in this PSA does she turn to the camera and say, my dad raped me. So yeah, it's a fucking allegory and you understood it. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Lily. You finally fucking understood a metaphor and it took them having to make it look like a hairy dick. For you to understand what was being what was being communicated here. <laughs> ah, it was a really obvious allegory, so I understood it, and that makes it good, says Lily Orchard. <sighs> oh God. I feel like Lily could misunderstand Captain Planet. I mean she already did. I pointed that out. Like the fucking diamonds being a Captain Planet level like fucking environmental message and Lily couldn't even understand it. <laughs> Bit where it crawls over her hand, making her recoil away from her boyfriend. Uh huh. Do you just do you just want to see the hairy penis PSA now, Lily? And you just <laughs> That's it. That's what childhood sex abuse feels like when you have to think about uh -huh. it. I was sexually abused at two points in my childhood by a teacher for five years and a peer for two. Oh, here we go. Now this is Lily trauma dumping. So, like, about five or ten minutes of this 27-minute video have actually been about has-been hotel. If this gets too intense for you guys, I'll skip it. But hopefully me, um, making fun of Lily will, uh... Well, I just want to see what Lily's getting at here, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, Lily, Lily fucking, Lily scholars, tell me if this is anything. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't believe what Lily says, because Lily just lies about so many things. And I know that Lily has something going on with her sister that seems really, really sketchy. And, like, Lily has not done herself any favors. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway. I honestly don't want Lily to watch BoJack Horseman. Yeah, right. Somebody told me that Lily said Bojack Horseman is family guy for your abusive ex. Which I don't even know how you would get that, but I guess probably somebody Lily was with likes Bojack Horseman, so now Lily hates Bojack Horseman. That seems to be Lily's entire way of interacting with media. I like Has Been Hotel, therefore... The hate Vivzy Pop gets is unfair, but I don't like Steven Universe. Therefore, the hate Rebecca Sugar gets is very fair, and I will contribute to it for five years. 
<laughs> yeah, Lily probably couldn't even fucking understand Bluey. I wouldn't trust Lily to understand fucking Coco Melon. <laughs> Too, and I've never felt more seen by a PSA than by this. And that's part of the issue. Okay. The conversation is so? uncomfortable, and so it's impolite to discuss it. It's a PSA, though. It's not made to be entertainment. It is there. It is supposed to make you uncomfortable because it is giving people information about a subject and helping them realize there is help for them. That's very different than entertainment, Lily. Hasbin Hotel is still entertainment. It's not a fucking PSA. Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I think Lily compares everything to Family Guy. To be fair, Bojack Horseman's like first few episodes did have like cutaway gags, and then they stopped that shit because it's not funny. And then it got really good. <laughs> My favorite episode of Bojack Horseman is Good Damage. I relate to it very, very much. I relate very much to Diane Nguyen trying to write her super serious big girl book and falling on her ass accidentally into writing a middle school mall cop, mall, mall investigator Nancy Drew story <laughs> for kids. I understand that very much and relate to it. <laughs> and the knock-on effect of that is if you don't want to have the uncomfortable conversation, you just leave it for the masturbator. Okay, so some... What does Dahmer have to- Dahmer's based on a real story. You can say that they dramatized it too much. But, like, Jeffrey Dahmer actually did those things. Those terrible, terrible fucking things. Like, that happened in real life, Lily. <laughs> like, those things really just fucking happened. He was a fucking deranged serial killer. <laughs> want to have the uncomfortable conversation. Remember how I said gay people could also be bad? Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer's a pretty good fucking example. <laughs> Conversation. You just leave it for the masturbators and the let's watch them get worse crowd. Hell, we're not- so Who the fuck is jerking off to Dahmer except maybe those women who will write to, like, serial killers in prison? Like, Jennifer's body, I don't know much about, but I had heard it was, like, good. And not, like, not, like, exploitative, exactly. And also, I don't know anything about Andy and Lele, but Lily won't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, I heard the Dahmer show was genuinely exploitative, like, like, they just turned it into, like, a circus, because, like, the story of J Jeffrey Dahmer is very, very, it's, it's, it's one of the darker true crime stories out there, and, again, it really fucking happened, you know? And, actually, homophobia is one of the reasons he didn't get caught for the longest time, like, he literally... Like, okay, maybe I'm going off into a subject I shouldn't, but fuck it. Jeffrey Dahmer literally, literally had, like, a 15-year-old kid escape from him. And the cops returned the kid to him, thinking, oh, haha, ha, it's just a couple of homos that are drunk. Haha, ha, isn't it funny that his, his naked boyfriend was running around drunk? Haha, ha, hee hee, and then that kid got killed, you know? Ugh, so because the police were homophobic, somebody died. <laughs> so, ugh. <laughs> Not even allowed to say sexual assault around Gen Z. We're supposed to say SA now. No, people say SA because they're not allowed to say sexual assault on YouTube. I, I have a problem with this too. Like, social media is degrading people's speech, you know? Because you'll get demonetized for saying sexual assault. Everyone has to say SA and they have to say sewer slide and stuff like that. It, like, yeah, that's the reason why people say it, Lily. So they don't get fucking demonetized. But it is impacting the youth, I think, because they it's it, it it becomes normalized to them to use these these little euphemisms for things instead of the real fucking words. So I kind of agree with Lily on that, but I think Lily's coming at it from the wrong angle. <laughs> Amazing how many James Somerton vibes. I don't know anything about James Somerton, except I watched a bunch of people react to his Utana video, and oh my god, his Utana video was worse. Than Lily's comments on it. <laughs> James Summerton is really out there going like, well, I watched Utana and I came up with a completely independent thought that no one has ever asked before. Did you know that Dios isn't a real person? <laughs> it's like, yeah, bro. That's like one of the most surface level fucking things in Utana, you fucking dipshit. Yeah, we've known that for 30 years, dumbass! 
<laughs> Maybe actually research from the people who have who run Otori.nu, which is a mutative fan site that has existed for fucking ever. It has all the information you could possibly ever want on the series. <laughs> Worst one is cheese pizza, yeah. Well, I can see how people wouldn't want to say child purr out loud. I can understand that. I can understand saying CP or whatever, but there's a time and a place when you're seriously discussing these topics. Yes, you should just fucking say them. I do feel bad for true crime YouTubers, though, because like, they can't even fucking talk about the subject without, like, not being able to eat. You know? <laughs> it's like... Ah! Uh. A Lily Organ analysis is like building a porch swing. Yeah, trying to build a porch swing while it's swinging, probably. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about the PSA? Well, like I was saying about the PSA, though, the PSA is supposed to make you uncomfortable. That that is the point of a PSA is 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 to wake people up to a a, a topic that they need to be aware of. You know, it's not made for entertainment, <laughs> like this is. Yes, yes, they cover a serious topic with one of the characters, but in the end, this is still a television show made for the purposes of entertainment, unlike a fucking PSA. <laughs> and sexual assault was already the sanitized alternative to rape. A well, not, well, not necessarily, because sexual assault can mean other things. It can mean you grab somebody's boob, you know, it, it can mean you grab somebody's ass, you know. So, that's still a term that is useful, Lily. <laughs> the word's so effective at communicating the sheer magnitude of violence being committed that it literally sounds like a brutal tearing noise. Common Wisdom says you're not supposed to show sexual abuse on screen, so the logical through line is that if you do, it's for reasons other than the Ooh. story. Hence why Let's not pause on that. I guess we're going to pause on that anyway. Who says you can't show sexual abuse on screen? That's like half of network television. That's like half of the Lifetime movies out there. What the fuck are you talking about? People rush to claim that a storyboarder had a rape fetish, completely ignoring the fact that storyboarders don't have the kind of creative control and autonomy that you think they do. So even reaching... So, okay, like, like, I hate that. Like, you're not even getting into, like, what the issue was, though. So I guess one of the storyboarders on Has Been, who worked on some of the dancing storyboard for, for, for Angel's scene possibly has some kind of non-con fetish. I hate calling it that, but that's what they call it. And look, you can think that's reprehensible. You can think that's disgusting. You can think that's ethically and morally wrong. That does not mean that this person should be fired. <laughs> you know? It, it, like, y if you go into the point where you're saying, like, employers should be able to, like, fire you based on shit in your personal life, and like your kinks you express on your on your NSFW account, that's fucking unacceptable. No, Lil Vivzy Pop should not have vetted the fetishes of every single one of her employees. That's fucking mental. <laughs> Are you fucking crazy? Your employers should not be digging into your personal life on any fucking level. <sighs> that's not what she said in the SU vids. Man, I don't know. But yeah, I don't, I don't I don't care why this person I don't even care that this person has this fetish. I don't fucking care. The, that should have no impact on their employability. You know, that is my issue here. You know, think whatever you want about it. Fine, but but to claim that because that one person worked on it then then Angel's entire story must be a fetish is is also fucking stupid. So I mean, I do agree with Lily on this, but also like Lily is not presenting what the issue was very well for this was stupid in the first place but you can't fault that line of thinking i know for a fact there are people out there who think storyboarders have significant creative control i oh no daniel i have people like I, I i said that to somebody i've said this to a few like little zoomers on twitter i'm like at what point should your employer be digging into your your private social media accounts in and your personal life and your kinks and they're like well employers ask for your social media when you get an interview i'm like well they fucking shouldn't it's none of their fucking business. Unless you're representing the company on your social media account, your employer has no fucking say in what you do online. That is... Unex no, I don't know what kind of fucking dystopia these kids are going to usher in if they keep thinking this way. <laughs> Where you have to hand over every single one of your social media accounts to your employer and then do what they say and never post anything they don't like. That's, that's fucking stupid as shit. No. You know? Ugh. 
Your employer has no goddamn business knowing or getting into what you do in your own time. If you're not representing the company, then it's none of their fucking business. That's all it is. The animation industry is full of perverts. I mean, <laughs> look, artists get horny too. Sometimes we draw horny things. Oh, well. <laughs> we have that power that is jealous of us. I've had defensive fans tell me many times my criticism of a show was unwarranted because the creator didn't do that. One of their employees under them on their payroll acting on their orders did that of their own volition. You think the showrunner does the payroll? The publisher does! <laughs> Amazon is paying them, not Vivzy Pop, you fucking retard! <laughs> Do you think Rebecca Sugar was also, like, in charge of hiring everybody? <laughs> Lily does not understand how television production works! And has never bothered to find out, even after five years! <laughs> Action. And it just got through without a single higher-up having to look at it, because that's how- I swear to God, Lily thinks that animation works like web comics, where there's just one person who started the web comic and then brings on other people and is in charge of everything, and then publishes it on a platform. <laughs> I swear to God, that's how Lily seems to think this works. Now we got an ad. We got an ad. We'll 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 wait for the ad to be over while we're looking at Charlie Sheen's face here. <laughs> Poor, poor Twitch is getting ads, YouTube doesn't. Because <laughs> YouTube hits get me money, you guys don't need ads. <laughs> Look, I promise, I promise I will try to fix the Twitch ads next time. I, I told it to make it infrequent, I don't know why it's doing it so often. <laughs> I can change it to, I can run an ad manually, but I know I'll fucking forget if I do. Yeah, but like, I don't care what your weird fetishes are, but your weird fetishes are no business of your fucking employer. So these people suggesting that Vizzy Pop should have vetted this person with a fetish is just completely ridiculous. Like, what kind of authoritarian dystopian bullshit where corporations are in control of everything do you want? Do you want the cyberpunk dystopia the 80s warned us about? Because we're headed that way! <laughs> It's gonna be fucking Night City up in here if you're not careful. <laughs> I'll probably be long dead by then anyway. <laughs> you guys can deal with it when I'm like 120 in my in my uh, rejuvenation pod. <laughs> okay, every we're back, we're back, everybody. Everybody seen Charlie Sheen's stupid face? You should throw tomatoes at him. He's a piece of shit. How production works, apparently. So they point and go. You have That's no idea. It. This story borders completely unrelated. <laughs> Of their Wait own a volition, bit. and it just got through without a single higher up having to look at it because that's how production works, apparently. So they that's not how production works at all, Lily. You've just never bothered to find out how it actually works, and you just make up shit. Like, again, the time you said that the Crooniverse should have been able to write around how Cartoon Network decided to air their delivered finished episodes. How were they supposed to do that, Lily? How were they supposed to do that? Oh. It's because the R word isn't a slur, Benjamin. That's why. <laughs> uh. They point and go, that's it. This story borders completely unrelated fetish is why I'm uncomfortable. It's what they've been told to think. People forget this. Most viewers and fans aren't critics. They're critical spectrum. This kid, this, 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 this storyboard is completely unrelated fetish is why I'm uncomfortable. If you, like, went on for two minutes about being uncomfortable about a cherub painting of Steven in the background. Jay, you throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> How dare you? I'm gonna get you later. <laughs> SpongeBob is a lot of disturbing fetish art behind the scenes from a storyboard artist. Oh, yeah, but, you know, a lot of the times fucking, fucking cartoonists get bored and they draw those things as jokes, too. You know, it's like... <laughs> They're adults. <laughs> this is what a lot of a lot of these fucking teenagers don't seem to understand. Adults are gonna do shit like that. <sighs> if Lily somehow got in charge of a TV show, God, if I ever like became a billionaire, I would go up to Lily Orchid and say, "Here, here's money to fund a show. Let's see what you do." <laughs> I'm sure it'll be hilarious. <laughs> is defined by stuff they remember from English class and stuff YouTubers tell them to believe. And neither of those things are in Things YouTubers tell them to believe, huh, Lily? You mean like all the people that parrot all the bullshit you said about Steven Universe constantly? 
But then when Vox calls you out for it, you told you said he was shitting his pants. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> Fallible. YouTube's full of critics, but it's also full of reaction channels, art streamers, commentary channels, debate streamers, and just plain old dorks who all pretend to be critics. This is. I'm all of those, by the way. I'm your biggest threat, Lily. <laughs> This isn't a death of media literacy issue, it's just a matter of people not being good at critical analysis. And to make all this worse, we're in an age where hardcore fandom is acting like critical analysis at all is being a no fun allowed buzzkill and an existential threat to their very existence. No, Lily, it's just because you fucking get shit wrong and you make assumptions and you like, you like try to filter everything through your own skewed view and how you critique shows depends on whether you like the people behind them or if people around you like those shows or not. If someone, like, if your ex-friend hates a show, you, like, you'll you'll love it. Apparently that's what happened here. Lily's ex-friend didn't want her to do stuff about Hasbin because she didn't like Vivzy Pop. Or they didn't like Vivzy Pop, whoever they were. And, and, and then Lily's not friends with that person anymore, and suddenly there's a deluge of, of Hasbin videos saying how good Hasbin is and how positive it is and how bullshit the, the, the criticism against Vivzy Pop is. So, like, like, fucking, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Zach, if you don't like how I fucking speak, then don't watch me. You know, this, 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 this is how, this is how it is. <laughs> you know, you don't have to agree with me. You know, I don't expect people, I'm not like Lily fucking Orchid, I don't expect everybody in my community to agree with me and be aligned on the same subjects and, like... <laughs> You all can have your own independent opinions. You can call me out on shit you think, yo, know, I might not agree. I don't care. But, like, <laughs> yeah, it, listen, back in my day, back in my day, we used retard to, to call normal people who have had such a fundamental brain dead lapse in logic <laughs> that there is no stronger word. What? Skrill? Oh, Skrill has, Skrill has sent me another message, apparently. Oh, <laughs> Skrill is saying we need to bring up the meme. We need to bring up the meme. Where is it? Oh, is it behind the screen? Pro there it is. You know, I'm something of a writer myself, says Lily Orchard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now you can fucking throw tomatoes at Brian. <laughs> uh, Brian Griffin really is your fucking persona, Lily. <laughs> Okay, he's going away now. <laughs> I thought Skrill had another voice memo for me. Uh, yeah, we said way worse things to each other as kids. Like, seriously. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look. In my chat, in my comment section, I do not censor people. You can disagree with me. You can call me a fucking idiot for some of my opinions. I do not care, but I, I am from a generation... Where you didn't have to agree with people on every single point to get along and to be friends, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's fucking seriously. Well, the thing is, the R word isn't, isn't used clinically anymore. Retard is not used clinically anymore, just like idiot isn't, and moron isn't, and imbecile isn't. Did you know those were all clinical words, too? Did you know that idiot used to be a diagnosable uh, condition? <laughs> Did you know that? I bet you didn't. <laughs> Oh, uh, Christ. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't think me saying retard is as bad as Lily saying, Man, Lisa would have been so much better if we saw the little girl get raped on screen. <laughs> you know? I'm just kind of- I'm just saying! <laughs> Was ignoramus- No, ignoramus isn't one. That's just calling somebody ignorant. Dumb, yeah, dumb is supposed to mean silent. Dumb is, dumb was a medical term as well. That meant you couldn't talk, and dumb also came to mean stupid, which probably isn't fair. I do remember, like, hearing, like, fucking Tommy when I was a kid. You know, that that deaf, dumb, and blind kid sure plays a mean pinball. I didn't know, like, what dumb meant. I, mean, I thought they were just calling him stupid. <laughs> I didn't know that meant he couldn't talk. <laughs> Words change. Uh. It would be wrong to try and place blame for this on a single person. Common blame figures tend to be Doug Walker or CinemaSense, but bad media analysis has just been the background noise of fandom for a long time. Surf through Twitter or Tumblr and you'll eventually find a take like, Lilo uh, is low-key pretty toxic to Nani? Well, uh, 
Fucking sorry. Uh, had a heaven. Tomatoes are only Twitch. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a Twitch extension, so YouTube can't do it. I'm sorry. I'll have to find fun things for YouTube. Maybe I should just give you guys more emotes than Twitch, and then that'll that'll be even. That'll be even. <laughs> and she should like do better before. Si Who has ever said that about Lilo? Most people would tell you like Lilo is fucking fucking autistic. Doug? Was Doug- did, did I miss a Doug Walker jump scare somewhere? Are you telling me I ripped off Doug Walker? Because how dare you? <laughs> YouTube doesn't have random mid-rolls, it's true. So to put up- because- because Twitch has to put up with ads, uh, they get to throw tomatoes. There. <laughs> that, that- I totally intended that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think Lilo is autistic. She- she came across that way to me, too. Nobody thinks that. Lily's just making it up. CinemaSins was even a sperm in Jeremy Scott's nuts. The place to rattle off lists of plot holes and nitpicks was the IMDb message boards, where their biggest target had nothing to do with it having more plot holes, and every- Lily, did you used to post on the IMDb message boards, you fucking freak? Who- Who? <laughs> Who actually posts there except deranged people? I guess you fit right in, though. Anything to do with popular thing bad, which is a form of brain rot the internet has never not been on. This is a. Cr oh wait, which 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 channels which channels are you talking about? The only one I know here is the mysterious Mister Enter. <laughs> you know the turning red nine eleven guy, <laughs> who I used to watch. Uh oh. Uh oh. Guys, Jay has something to say again. We're gonna have to all pause and listen to him. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And you know, this show, this show is about the demons, right? Why are the demons so sexy? <laughs> well, Jay, you're Black Doug Walker. Isn't that just Malcolm Ray? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I love Malcolm, actually. He was great in Lackadaisy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a critical mass years in the making. People wonder why it seems like audiences are dumber now and less able to read, and the truth is, they're not. They've always been around. You just never used to be exposed to these people. Back in ye olden days, fandoms were fractured and isolated. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Fucking, now you're talking about, like, old 90s, like, BBS forums, <laughs> Lily. Lily, I think Lily, I think you might actually be too young to remember this shit. <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. Related forums were the places people went to discuss media, and they were often community run and had their own rules. So people built okay. their own communities, and if people were causing trouble, like say if you were the kind of person who screamed "Let people enjoy things" when others started criticizing an episode of a show, you got the boot, which meant. Ugh, not necessarily, but like, so what? So what if one person on a forum says, let people enjoy things? They're expressing their opinion. Okay, how does that harm you? You could be a little annoyed by them, sure. But like, so what? <laughs> Again, I, I'm a person who doesn't think everybody needs to fucking agree all the time. I argue for fun sometimes. <laughs> I clearly like to yell at things and argue. <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> and I think it's healthy to be challenged on your ideas sometimes, you know? <laughs> more forums with more rules. Fan sites which were community run and had community decided rules. Okay, so are you just bitching about fandoms again? You're not even saying anything about the fucking show. And the dis- not even about the discourse surrounding the show. You're gonna get haunted by Alistair. Like, oh, Christ. <laughs> Sure, this meant every micro-community was its own fiefdom with its own power-hungry moderators and interpersonal drama, but it sure Absolutely they were, yes, actually. <laughs> ...beats Twitter, where everyone is shoved into the same room and all hate each other and are all constantly outraged that other people- well, No, Twitter- Twitter is very, like, Twitter will just funnel you into whatever your interests are. Like, you won't- you won't see, like, trending topics. You won't see the same trending topics as everyone else and you're recommended. It-, it it's just like YouTube. The algorithm funnels you into what your interests are. So if you're in a toxic community, it's no fault but your own. People are talking in their vicinity. Fandom and discourse moved from isolated forums to a small number of mega platforms because that's where the people were and a big... 
Well, it, the, the, the fact that the internet has been split up into just a few mega platforms is kind of a problem. Again, it's, 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 it's just like we're being roped, we're being wrangled by corporations. You know, the internet used to be much, much more of a wild west. And I kind of miss it. <laughs> Bigger fandom would be better. But there, the moderators are all platform staff and everyone is forced to play in the same jungle gym. And now we're suffering the ever-present issue on the internet where everyone needs to have their take on everything, even if they... Yeah, everyone needs to have their take on everything, even if they're making up stupid bullshit just to have a hot take for attention. Does that sound fucking familiar, Lily Orchard? Oh, don't throw tomatoes at Lucifer. He's a good boy. He's doing his best. <laughs> know nothing about the subject in question. So now you have to be... No, talking about speaking with authority and having to have your take on, on subjects you know fucking nothing about, like when you were talking about fucking voodoo earlier. <laughs> in community with people you never knew existed, but they always existed. Media literacy isn't any more dead than it was 20 years ago. And every time I see another video essay about it pop up, it's almost immediately clear that someone is just mad that other takes have to exist in their vicinity. In the case- No, the reason why media literacy is dead is because people will just pick through a show. They won't watch it. They won't follow the story. They won't follow what the fucking show is telling them. They'll just scan the show for any little thing they can call problematic. And that's why we get people saying, L Alistair should be more black because he's Creole, and Rosie is blood libel because she has a Jewish mom voice and is a cannibal. You know, they don't actually follow what is being communicated to them by a piece of media. They just try to find whatever little nitpick they can that they can filter through their their, their weird fake progressive dogma you know so they can say well this is problematic because well it's like the people are like <laughs> so the people are like well emily is supposed to be emily and has been is supposed to be black which she's not she was she was suggested to be in her voice call sheet but her design changed after they hired an indian woman so i don't think she is supposed to be anymore but if you dare do a black version of emily with the same grayish skin as Sarah, then it's bad because you're doing a black person with ashy skin, even though the fact is they're fucking angels and everybody in Hasbin Hotel is pale, because that's the style. You know? But, but because their dogma is ashy skin on black people bad, anything that could possibly resemble that is also bad. Like, I, d I do not understand this level of thinking. It's like they have a list of bad things, and anything that could possibly be construed as one of those things, they just they just say is is absolutely that thing. You know, it, uh, we've been having this argument on Twitter lately too, where people are like, "Oh, black hair has to be realistic in cartoons." Why? Why? <laughs> we have to single out the black characters and draw them differently. When white people and Asian people and other characters can all have crazy fucking hair. Like, I, I posted Goku as an example and was like, this isn't the way any Asian person wears their hair. What did Toriyama mean by this? <laughs> you know? That's what you sound like! <laughs> so, like, no matter how, how, how... I don't think it was rude, that fanatic, because the person was editing somebody else's art in the first place, and they were being a little snot, and they were saying, I fixed the design. So then I drew over their drawer over, and, and, and streamlined the character, and made her look more like the canon Emily, but black, and then a bunch of people were like, it's racist! It's racist because her hair is unrealistic. Look at fucking Angel Dust hair here, is that realistic? With the spots on it? <laughs> you know, like, cartooning is about abstraction. <laughs> it's not about depicting things realistically. <laughs> but this person was like, I fixed the character design. They put all these extra details on it that didn't need to be there, and it looked terrible. <laughs> And then people were like, well, you, you gave her the same skin tone as Sarah, so now she's ashy and it's racist. And it's like, no, your, your, your fucking smug redesign was just you being a little bitch. <laughs> and I did it to annoy you to making a better streamlined design than yours. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, they were being rude in the first place with this whole, look, I fixed your art bullshit. So, <laughs> I mean, you cannot agree with me, like I said, but I don't think I did fucking anything wrong there. 
Like, I just saw people go after, like, like a person who did a really cute design of, of, uh, orange, orange something from the Strawberry Shortcake series, and it was super duper cute, but people were like, but her hair is half dreadlocks and half natural, that's not realistic. It's, it's a fucking what? It's a cartoon! <laughs> what is your problem? You know, I, I just, it's just so, like, these people are just so eager to be, like, progressive that they end up, like, just being, like, like, they just had a big low-key regressive and <laughs> it's so strange. I don't, like, people that, like, make black versions of characters normally are fine. Like, it's a character design exercise, so what? You know, as long as they're not saying, I fixed your shit, you know? There's a difference between, hey, I did a black, I did a black design of this character as a character design exercise, and I fixed your shit. I fixed your art. There's a very, very big difference. <laughs> Very, very big difference. <laughs> case of angel dust, what's actually happening is a pretty common phenomenon. I can easily see how this would make someone uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. I had to step away and have a breather before coming back. And a lot of people will encounter Did you have <sighs> something that makes them uncomfortable, but it's not enough for it to just end there. It has to be something other than I don't have the stamina for this. So it gets reconfigured uh -huh. into something that sounds more objective. It's like when you- I don't think people- like, were uncomfortable by Angel Dust, and so they had to, like, go after the storyboarder who with, who has a kink. I think th these people are just fucking bloodthirsty, and they want to feel important, and they want to feel like they're taking down somebody. And so they, they do it any fucking way they can, <laughs> you know? And they're usually wrong. Yeah, Rosie and Mimsy are grayish and purplish, too. Everybody is! Everybody is pale! In fucking has been hotel because they're all dead or they're all not human, <laughs> you know. And that's just a way. This is a visual shorthand way to communicate to your brain that this thing you're looking at isn't exactly human. <laughs> that's how cartooning works. <laughs> Ugh. See, I'm genuinely losing hope in the idea that the people in the world are generally good and bad people and are just super loud and more noticeable. Yeah, I don't know. I, the ones, the, the most insidious ones are the bad people who claim they have a moral cause. You know? Like, well, I'm just trying to educate you, and if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna send a cancel mob after you. It's like, no, you're not a good person. You're not a good person if you do that shit. <sighs> I don't even know who this is. <laughs> You see people unironically using this image. The YouTuber Just Stop touched on this in what is so far the only video to include the death of media literacy that isn't complete horseshit, in how young people, especially young trauma survivors, uh -huh. act like something being too much for them is treated like a mistake. And to expand on that, media is treated, especially by younger people, as an escape from life. It's not supposed to be a place where you have to think about the real world. But then it talks- Yeah, exactly. A lot of media is escapism. That's why a lot of people are sick. Of, of, like, companies like Sweet Baby Inc. interjecting their politics into fucking video games. Like, we just want to relax and play a game. We don't want to be lectured at by what you think is the, the most moral worldview. <laughs> even if I agree with you. Even if I agree with you. I've said this before, and this is a good this is a good time to say it while we're doing writing tips. Maybe I should cobble together like a writing tips video out of all the random bullshit I've said here. But look, <clears throat> if you're writing a story, if you're making a piece of media, and your first concern is the message, that's bad. Doesn't matter what your message is. Doesn't matter if you're liberal or conservative, doesn't fucking matter. If your primary concern is the message. And educating the unwashed masses. You are gonna write a fucking bad piece of media. That's why all those, like, Christian movies on Pure Flix suck. Because their primary goal is to give you the message about how Christianity is the best and Jesus. You know, so they write a bad fucking story. You can have a pro-Christian story that's still good if you're not just, like, using your piece of media as a vehicle to, like, impart your ideology on people. <laughs> You know, you don't even have to consciously think about themes when you're writing. They will come. Themes will come. You know, you might not even realize the themes yourself until you're halfway through something. You know? I gotta say it in the spooky voice so they know it's bad. 
I hate it when a multi-million dollar corporation tries to educate me. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Prince of Egypt with peak. Yeah, there you go. Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. Egypt. Literal Bible story. Is fucking fantastic. You know? It, and it's good as a story on its own. It's not... It's not in there telling you convert to Christianity and punching you in the face with it, you know? And again, it's bad when even liberals do it. If you're just using media as a way to impart your ideology and impart the message, you're gonna be dog shit at it. You know, plenty of, plenty of media has a good message in it without shoving it down your fucking throat. <laughs> yeah, VeggieTales is a good example because VeggieTales is actually legitimately funny, as cringing as it can be with the religion sometimes. VeggieTales is actually fucking funny. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's very rare that a Christian thing can be funny. You know? <laughs> talks about something uncomfortable, and a lot of them feel like an unspoken agreement was broken, which leads to flailing for an answer using that limited critical spectrum. You mean like you feeling like an unspoken agreement was broken when, when you read interviews by Rebecca Sugar and were mad that the things she said didn't align with your view of the show? <laughs> you know that? <laughs> you got really pissed at her just talking <laughs> somehow? Lily hates Prince of Egypt. I remember last time Lily called Prince of Egypt, like, like, Lily called, like, the plagues, like, on Egypt, like, putting people in an open-air prison, because I think, like, parasocial Lily just learned the term open-air prison and doesn't know how to use it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I said Prince of Egypt literally has like God in it and religion in it, but it, it's it's but the point of Prince of Egypt isn't to tell you convert to Christianity. It's to tell you like a moving story overall, and that's why it works. And that's why it's better than something like say God's not dead. <laughs> or you have a Christian boy arguing with his misanthropic, you know, God-hating atheist professor to show that Christianity is super good, guys. And it's a bad fucking movie. You never seen Prince of Egypt? Oh, you should. You should. My God, it is a very good example of 2D animation. That and Road to El Dorado. The animation in those two movies is incredible. I kind of wish DreamWorks never moved to 3D, even though they're doing good now. They had that bad period. They had the Shark Tale period, and it was... There's no bueno. <laughs> ...dogmatic thinking we talked about before. This can take the form of, this made me uncomfortable as a trauma survivor, therefore it's fetishizing my trauma. Prince of Egypt is free on YouTube? Really? Huh. I'm gonna have to watch it later tonight. <laughs> but it can also take the form of, FUCKING PRONOUNS! This feeling of an unspoken agreement being the fuck broken was that? is at the heart of a lot of the visceral, but at the same time unfocused, vague outrage. There wasn't really an explanation as to why this was supposed to be fetishizing, and the most I got from anyone was vibes. This vague feeling. And this is often put at the feet uh -huh. of Gen Z, but in truth, Gen Z isn't any more dumb than teenagers from any previous generations. Yeah, they're not any more dumb than you, Lily, because you do the same exact fucking shit. Oh, my vibes. My vibes. I don't vibe with this. Steven should have stayed, stayed estranged from the diamonds, because I don't vibe with this. I don't know about the Starfield. I don't care about Starfield. That's why. I'm kind of over Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lily really vibed with Stockholm. It's just that previous generations didn't have TikTok to broadcast their impulsive idiocy on. Once again, you never used to be exposed to the ramblings of teenagers from seven countries over. And now you mm -hmm. are, and they feel compelled- So now you're blaming teenagers for being media illiterate when it's most, mostly you who are, who are in your 30s, Lily? To make their confusing feelings and volatile emotions everyone else's problem. Make no mistake, if we had TikTok back when she was 13, my sister would have been spouting all the possessive, weird, socially poisonous bullshit that she had been previously reserving for the so lily again can't get through a fucking video without bringing up her personal bullshit like again like i was saying at the beginning of this lily seems to like think everybody who comes across her videos will instantly know her entire history and and her personal life and everything she's ever been interested in and everything she's ever said in every video she's ever made you know, like, imagine, imagine you just came across this video just wanting to get a video on Hasbin Hotel. 
And in the first four minutes, you get Digimon, Steven Universe, and Mass Effect, and World of Warcraft. And then, inter and then throughout the video, you have Lily saying, Well, I was sexually assaulted, and my sister, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like... <laughs> it just stay out of topic! Like I said before, Lily, this is your job. Your job is to review animation. You have decided to make this your job. You know, so why are you making it about you? Why can't you just fucking review a piece of media like a normal goddamn person? <laughs> I know Lily's having beef with her sister right now, and yeah, I mean, the way Lily is, I, I kind of believe that Lily is darvowing a lot. <laughs> Just from my experiences of Lily's behavior with these fucking videos. But I, again, I won't comment too much on it because I don't really know the situation and I'm not really qualified in any way to comment on, on domestic issues like that. So, yeah. <laughs> uh. I know. Well, yeah, but like, yeah, but like. Like, when I'm fucking streaming, I don't expect any of you to, like, fucking know everything about me. Like I said, I got a comment just today when I did my community post with the comic of someone saying, You're the switcheroo way, you artist! <laughs> you know, even though it's like in half my videos, I'm working on it. And I still didn't notice. It's fine. It's just funny. There's gonna be some people... Sorry about the ads. I'll just ramble there's gonna be some people who only know me as a youtuber and there's gonna be some people who only know me as a comic artist and there's gonna be some people who only know me as an angry bitch on twitter <laughs> you know that's just how it be i can't go on stream or make a video a scripted video even assuming people know every single aspect of my life and all of my interests and and everything i do and everywhere i am you know that that is completely unreasonable to expect which just makes lily's videos like just incomprehensible to anyone who doesn't know who she is <laughs> You know? Again, if you just if you just came across this video from like from like recommendations, like what would you even think of it? Like just imagine you don't know who Lily is. You're like, oh hey, a video on the Hasbun Hotel discourse. I think that's pretty fucking stupid too. I'll watch this video, and then you get all of this. Like, how is anyone supposed to follow this if they don't know who Lily is? I think Lily got popular from doing the Korra video and then the Steven Universe video. Lily still has 141k subscribers. This got 50k views. Um, <laughs> the stream we are doing right now is, is, is being advertised in my recommended looking at Lily Orchard's video. Isn't that great? Because I know how to use SEO. <laughs> ears of her friends, her boyfriend, and me. But you can see this in older people too. People who never emotionally grew up. I just showed one. People who never emotionally grew up, kind of like you, Lily. <laughs> kind of like you, Lily. Kind of like you, Lily, who was like annoyed at Steven Universe acting like a 13 year old boy constantly. <laughs> That's right. Uh, tomatoes for Starfield. Don't play Starfield. Go play No Man's Sky. That's what Starfield was trying to be. <laughs> Join me in No Man's Sky, everybody. I am a I am a I am a launch player. My name is literally Sai S A I in the game. <laughs> That's how old school I am. We have to listen to this fucking bald idiot. He looks like every other chud streamer on fucking YouTube. Of a man who was completely unable to accept that the world was leaving his anachronistic ass behind and used video games to escape from the crushing existential dread that- well, Okay, l listen, listen, even if you don't agree with this guy and even if he's a fucking retard, it, like, like, yeah, some people play video games to escape from the real world. There's nothing wrong with that. One time, I had somebody tell me. Vivienne from Dragon Age was unrealistic because she's black and in a high position of power. And, you know, fantasy is automatically medieval Europe, so that shouldn't happen. And I'm like, do I need to tell you the entire history of Thetis and why that makes perfect sense? <laughs> and they're like, do you think that maybe, you think that just maybe black gamers 
want to just play a video game and not have to be reminded of oppression? You think they maybe just want to relax and play a nice fantasy game where that shit doesn't exist? You think that maybe? Maybe they might want that? Yeah, Vivienne, let me show you a picture of her so you know who I'm talking about. Uh, so this is Vivienne, Madame de Fer. She is the uh, court mage of um, the Queen of Orlais, which is basically fantasy France. She is originally from Ravenne. Uh, she grew up in the Free Marches, and then she ended up in a, in a circle in Ole because she is a mage, and mages belong in circles. But unlike many other mages, she has a lot of free reign because she has worked her way up the political ladder of Ole, which is very, very hard to do. So she is a very influential person who is very good at playing political games, and she's very cool, and I like her, and the game wouldn't let me kiss her, and I'm very mad about that because she already had a lover, and she's probably, like, in her 50s, actually. But <laughs> I still wanted to romance her. <laughs> Uh, Vivian became, like, my best friend my first playthrough, because I was just a little barefoot Dalish elf who didn't know anything about the fucking Chantry. That's how I played her, so, so Vivian immediately became, like, my mom friend. It was great. <laughs> I still wanted to romance her, though. So anyway, somebody told me that it was unrealistic that this character had a lot of power because she's black in a fantasy world. In a fantasy world that doesn't follow the same rules as Earth. Where, in, in Dragon Age, you are more likely to be discriminated against by your accent and what country you come from than your skin color. <laughs> That's how Dragon Age works. Because it's all a hodgepodge. Because the Deventer Imperium was a lot like the Roman Empire, so a lot of people got moved around the continent. So it's very normal to see a country with a lot of, like, uh, just a melting pot of people in Dragon Age. She is definitely... No, she, I don't think she's a mom, technically, but she's definitely a, a MILF. But yeah, somebody told me it was unrealistic for her to be in power because she's black. And have a lot of influence because she, she's black. And I'm like, do, 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 do you think black people just want to play a video game only to be reminded of how shitty real life is? <laughs> I don't think they do. So on that front, yeah, it's okay for people to want to play video games and not have to be reminded of real life bullshit. But this guy was still having a meltdown over nothing, it sounds like. But in a general concept is what I'm saying. It's okay for people to just want to fucking play a video game without somebody in their ear telling them, you know, like, you have to check your privilege or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, uh, it was somebody on Reddit, Seraphil, like, ages and ages ago when I used to use Reddit when there was still a Dragon Age community on there, you know, before the games atrophied for nine fucking years. <laughs> That him and people like him were obsolete. And then the games themselves reflected that reality he was trying to escape, and he believes that's ever- Wait, people think it's racist for her to be quote-unquote mean? Okay, like, yeah, Vivienne, okay, she's she's a little bit of a suck-up bitch. That is more because she plays the game of Orle. In Orle, everything is about appearances and status, so she has to be very buttoned up and very in control of every conversation. That's how she is. But if you get to know Vivian, she warms up to you. If you, like, don't piss her off, she can become a very good friend. She's the only one who asks the Inquisitor if you're alright after Haven burns down, if you're friends with her. She's the only one who looks looks into how you're doing mentally. <laughs> She's a great friend if you don't piss her off, you know? So, yeah, once you warm up to her, you see more of her personality. But I think another reason people hated Vivian is because she's pro-circle. I'm explaining Dragon Age politics now, I'm so sorry. But the point is, the church in Dragon Age keeps mages in circles to protect them and everyone else from their power. And Vivienne was a very needed perspective on a mage who thinks the circles are good for mages and that mages should be around their own kind because who else can understand what they're going through and the dangers of, of, of being a mage? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's why a lot of people didn't like her, because she was a powerful woman who wasn't like smiling and kind all the time. And she was pro circle. But she's one of my favorite characters, so fuck them. <laughs> Everyone else's problem. And so he flailed and screamed because in his delusional mind, an agreement was broken. An agreement made by nobody but him. I'm a trauma survivor. <sighs> There's a whole host of things that trigger Never the shit out like, of me. I don't... And I've had to confront most Wait of them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cockroaches. <laughs> Don't watch Asmongold streams then, Lily. Loud knocking on door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> spiders. Wait, well, you're not afraid of angel dust then? So why did you put spiders and cockroaches in, in, sandwich, in sandwich all this, like, real, like, 
trauma in between Lily. Is that supposed to be a joke? Uh, when covering a story, but years of experience doing this is how I know to take a breather. The video doesn't have to Years of experience being wrong on the internet. Yeah, Lily, you're the fucking queen. You should gather up all the little media illiterate zoomers and make your own fucking cult because you would be their goddess, Lily. Be out today. Young people don't have that experience. And the truth is, I don't think that's a real problem. Discourse doesn't matter. Has been well, yeah, abusive incest. So wait, are you saying that you... Non-abusive incest is okay, then? So it's not abusive incest okay? Only abusive incest triggers you, Lily, huh? I, again, is she doing this on fucking purpose? She, she, she must be, right? She can't, she can't be this dense, right? <laughs> All the in Lily has, Lily has been accused of having an above average in interest in incest. So to, to, to put abusive in front of it instead of just incest itself is a bit... Yeah. Again, I'm not very qualified to talk on these topics, so I'm not really going to. <laughs> I know to take a breather. The video doesn't have to be out today. Young people don't have that experience. And the truth is, I don't think that's a real problem. Discourse doesn't so after all that, you don't think it's a real problem that kids are having their language degraded by, uh, by online censorship and have no fucking media literacy? You don't think that's a problem? Really? Especially when they were, they were out of school for two years with COVID, so now they can't read. Like... <laughs> matter has been no telling there's an average interest in incest well no i was just wording it funny but you're right <laughs> can we look at our wikitubia page sure it wasn't going anywhere Why not? just because twitter thought it was fetishizing abuse for 20 minutes i say this as someone who is often wrongfully credited with single-handedly destroying the reputation of a show and a creator which are both doing fine dumb inter yeah though you were though your fucking whack-ass video like, people parrot it directly, Lily, and you just fucking lie about things. You know, Patty Lapone is gonna haunt you now. Single-handedly <laughs> destroying the reputation of a show and a creator which are both doing fine. Dumb internet drama doesn't matter, and hasn't mattered. Yeah, so, okay, Rebecca Sugar's doing fine, so all the shit you, you did... All the shit you did for the reputation of her show, it shouldn't matter. It's fine. It's fine when, when you abuse people, Lily, huh? Unless you're the kind of person who hears someone's bad take on a thing you like and takes it personally. I mean, a lot of people do attribute, attribute, um, Lily with, um, ruining Steven Universe reputation online, which I do think because Lily's video got passed around a lot. And a lot of people just parrot shit from it, especially a lot of the inaccurate shit that isn't really even true. Anytime, anytime somebody says Steven Universe has arcs, I'm like, okay, okay, you're getting all your information from Lily Arkwood's video, aren't you? Because there's no fucking arcs in Steven Universe, it's not a fucking anime. <laughs> and the only solution for that is to go to therapy. Also, thank you for the link, Jade, and we'll, we'll look at that. Being is a victimless crime. You're a loser, baby. Being media literate is a victimless crime? I mean, you're a victim of being fucking stupid. So, what the fuck was that video even about? Like, let, let's let's review, kids. So, Lily's like, Vivzy Pop gets drama. Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe. Asbud Hotel, Digimon. Digimon, Digimon. And, and then, World of Warcraft. And Darksiders. And Voodoo. It's bad that they do Voodoo. Because reasons that... I think they ripped off Princess and the Frog. Because I never heard of Voodoo outside of anything else. <laughs> and then... So Lily talks about Princess and the Frog for like two whole fucking minutes. And then... And then... Voodoo, Voodoo, Voodoo. I don't take Christians not liking the show seriously because fuck them. Princess and the Frog again. Darksiders. People say Vaggy and Charlie are boring, but they're just sex shy because we don't see them fuck on screen. Even though that's not what that means. Oh yeah, and, and Steven Universe ripped off the Asari from Mass Effect, even though that's not fucking true. And then there's a and then a brief lesson on gay history that wasn't really relevant. And then talking about 
Talking about the phenomenon where children raised together will start seeing them each other as siblings. But that's why childhood friends the lovers is okay. Um I like Angel Dust because he says his problems out loud, and also I was abused, guys. I was abused. You know I was abused, guys? You know I was abused? My sister is totally wrong, you guys. I was the abused one. Um, and then what the fuck else was just talking about Angel Dust and not making a point. And then, and then, oh, Lisa would have been so much better if we saw that little girl get raped on, scene, on screen. Why didn't they just show her actually being raped? Why did they just imply it heavily instead? Why did they do the classy fucking thing instead of the exploitative thing? I don't understand. I'm literally fucking orchard. And then bitching about Korra. And then bitching about Steven Universe again, and then misunderstanding the point of both Steven Universe and Hasbin Hotel, and then talking about the, the Harry Dick PSA, and then talking about Korra again, and 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 so this video barely talked about the actual discourse Vivzy Pop was facing. It, it's like she didn't even go into like why people were saying that stuff about the story border with the fetish and like how much trouble people were trying to cause over it. This was just another excuse to talk about yourself and your own opinions on various random fucking things, Lily. <laughs> uh, at least you got some really great sci rants out of it that are probably going to get me cancelled on Twitter, but... <laughs> Who cares? I, I, uh, yeah, Korra barely had anything to fucking do with this, and then Lily was just wrong. Because the entire fourth season is about Korra recovering from that. <laughs> And how it affected her mentally. <laughs> and how she still has, like, fucking mercury in her body or something, right? And now she had to learn how to walk again. <laughs> yeah, it's just that Lily thinks somehow that, that Alistair must have been inspired by um, Dr. Facilier because it's the only other voodoo character uh, Lily has ever fucking heard of. Ah, damn it, it opened the fucking link in the in the stupid Twitch, or the stupid OBS browser. Okay, so it's 5.45 for me. We'll go a little longer. I, I usually go to, like, 6 o'clock sometimes. Here's Vivian again, my love. If only I could have romanced you. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's look at the Wikitubia page for Lily. Why not? Why not? Yeah, she barely talked about the fucking discourse and just talked about herself again. At least she wasn't making Nazi jokes this time. Oh god, there are so many advertisements. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't want to show Lily's face on screen. That's a little rude. Unless, I mean, did they release the picture themselves? Um, hang on a sec. Uh, let me hide the picture though. I don't want to like. I don't want to like face face dox people. That's kind of mean. Um, where is my? Oh god, where is the big chrome? Okay, hang on, I'm just gonna hide the image. Uh, oh, wait, we can change it to the YouTube icon, that's perfect, okay. <laughs> I was just gonna, like, go into inspect element or something. There we go, we have replaced it with the, 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 the icon they have now of, of Lily and Wifey crying and kissing, which I don't know what the fuck that's about. <laughs> that's a little strange, I don't, I don't know. Okay, Lillian Valerie Lily Orchard. Valerie, where did that come from? Age 31, born in 1992. God, I feel old. <laughs> and Michaela Turkelson <laughs> Orchard. It's a strange. That must have been the previous last name. Anyway, or YouTube duo. Since I've never seen the wife on the channel, does the wife do anything <laughs> besides draw? I don't. I've never, I've never seen her do anything. I don't know. But, um, okay. Producers and comedians. Comedians is a very strong word. Critics is also a very strong word. Okay, I'm not going to make fun of the wife's art. I don't have a beef with the art, the wife, so I'm going to be nice, okay? <laughs> so, I'm not going to be a snob like I usually am. Um... See, the major focus surrounds My Little Pony. When's the last time Lily made a My Little Pony video, though? Like, seriously, when is the last time? Let's see. Pokemon, Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah, somebody wanted me to watch this video. Mary Sue's are fun, actually. We, we might do that sometime. 
We'll do more Lily reacts. Why the fuck not? What do I have to lose? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so people might be saying I'm getting obsessed. I don't know. But we're going to play more I Want to Hug That Gator tomorrow. So talk about obsession. So when is the last time Lily even talked about fucking... I guess My Little Pony comes up in this, but it's a general video. When's the last time you actually talked about My Little Fucking Pony? <laughs> So, oh god, what is that? That's horrifying. How far back does this go? Oh, there's the wife. Okay, the wife has done some things. I'm, I'm, okay. Like two years ago. That's why I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't really know who these people are. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a lily, uh, a lily, a lily lore keeper like some of you. Um, okay. Let's go back. I, <laughs> I lose nothing over watching Lily except my fucking sanity. But yes, we are going to do more I want to hug that gator tomorrow. Uh, I'll be doing stupid voices. Oh! <laughs> Fluffy Shark Dot has sent a $1.99 super chat. $1.99 from Fluffy Shark Dot has Lily at during her wedding vows Steven Universe. <laughs> Lily probably brought up Rebecca Sugar on her wedding day. Let's be real. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the text okay. Uh, oh god, oh, there we go, there we go. I'm sorry to make that picture bigger. <laughs> I apologize! <laughs> you threw a shuriken at them! Jesus, thank you! <laughs> um, okay. Lily Orchard has garnered infamy on the internet for her apparent misunderstanding of story writing as evident by her now-deleted Twitter thread Simple Writing Twips tri Tips a Thread. Yes, that got Lily- That did get Lily back on my radar back in the day when she wrote that hundred tweets of- writing tips that were barely writing tips and most of them were just like, I hate Steven Universe and I hate She-Ra. <laughs> many, many people have gone over that though, so I don't think I need to. <laughs> but yeah, and then I was like, oh yeah, you're the person that did that fuck-ass Steven Universe video, and now I'm a fan. Um, so I think the first time I heard of Lily, I wasn't a fan of Steven Universe yet. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, the shirt can hit the wife instead! Lily, what have you done? <laughs> You've gotten your wife killed by ninjas! Um, let's see. On June 24th, 2021, her fiancé, Michaela, officially joined the channel. I swear they only changed the name recently, though, right? Or maybe, maybe not. Lily's on Twitter? No. I thought Lily was banned from Twitter. Account suspended. No good, I have messages and things. Let's ignore that. Um, let's see. Controversy. Let's see. We'll go right down to controversy. Starting in 2017, Lily started getting criticized for how she delivers her critiques, ripping off movie Bob and Jim Sterling and repeat. Well, I, I asked this before. Who the fuck? Who the fuck uses movie Bob as like a model <laughs> for anything? Oh yeah, I'm not saying like, I'm not saying the wife doesn't have room for improvement in the art. Yeah, but I don't want to be mean about it because <laughs> she hasn't done anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see lying about certain people inserting pro left wing rants into some of her videos which even, even when they don't involve politics yeah I said that before if you're, if you're injecting politics into things even if I agree with you even if I agree with you if you're injecting politics into things into your narrative it's gonna be bad <laughs> you know it's just gonna be bad you have to learn subtlety <sighs> Uh, because Lily doesn't understand subtlety, because Lily thinks a little girl should have been raped on screen, so we know for sure that her dad was molesting her. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, calling her detractors to make videos about her Nazis, of course, she just calls people Nazis for things that have nothing to do with Nazism. An example, she called the mysterious Mr. Enter a fascist for his video on Candace Owens. Okay, and cartoon cartoon she a neo-nazi because he said sjw do people even use that word anymore i think we say woke now <laughs> i think we say woke now to describe those sorts of people but we mean the same types of people we mean the people who think they're the mor they're the morality police and they want to feel superior to someone else so they go around the internet tutting other people like you drew that character not fat enough you you did a problematic thing you like you like valentino the the moth pimp from has been which makes you as bad as a rapist you know those people <laughs> that's what people mean when they say woke and sjw a lot of the time at least in my experience also yeah car cartoon she like one of the most fucking 
like fucking like mild fucking creators out there. What the fuck? <laughs> SJW is a slur now. You can't just say things are slurs, you know? You can't just uh, declare something a slur out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, social justice warrior, which used to be used as an actual like people used to use SJW as an earnest term to describe themselves. Same with woke. People used woke to describe themselves, even though woke started out as something in the black community to talk about police brutality, but then a bunch of white people started using it, so now we make fun of it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, 2018, she released a video, Guard Break, in response to Josh Scorcher. I remember Josh Scorcher being a brony that she had a falling out with. That's what I know about him. Uh, where she infamously told anyone that's being bullied to grab the heaviest thing they could find and beat their bully with it and said if they get suspended, that'll just end in the bully. So, if they get suspended. So, Lily was directing advice toward children. So, Lily would know that children watch her channel. Because suspended would mean school. You're not going to get suspended from your job for beating up somebody. You're going to get fucking arrested. <laughs> Because that's what happens to adults. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no problem with liking Valentino as a character, as a concept. Characters are fictional constructs. They are not realistic. They're nothing like real people. They are characters in of themselves are allegories, basically. You know, nobody acts exactly like fiction. Like I said earlier, fiction is contrived. It's just how well you hide it. <laughs> All fiction is contrived. <laughs> uh, it, the most important thing in writing is believability. If you can make the audience buy into what you're telling them and believe the world, it doesn't matter how fucking kooky and crazy it is. You just have to make them believe it. Like, look at everything, every, everything everywhere all at once. That's a clown shoes fucking movie. It's crazy. It's all over the place. But you buy into it. Because it is emotionally sincere and it sells it to you, you know? It sells you on the concept. There's something called the willful suspension of disbelief. You have to get the, the audience to willfully suspend their disbelief to buy into the world you are presenting them with. You know? That is, again, originality, not that important. You know? Like... Not using tropes, not even important. You could write the tropiest, most cliche, most unoriginal thing. But if your execution is good and your believability is good, people will like it. Think of, like, the most generic thing you like. Like, I'm trying to think of something that's really fucking generic. Yeah, reacts tend to become four-hour streams. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that's really fucking generic, but, like, was well executed. Or it's like... Fucking, I'll go read fan fiction about, like, my Dragon Age OTP, and I'll be, I'll be fed the same fucking type of story over and over again, but that's what I want. I want to be fed the same slop about these two characters. That is what I'm seeking at the moment, you know? <laughs> so. Uh, let's see. Let's see, and then she became fa infamous for her So X is Garbage and Here Why, which is a ripoff of H-Bomber Guy, who did that plagiarism video recently, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, notably, her Steven Universe video where she implies its creator, Rebecca Sugar, to be a Nazi sympathizer. Yes, she did do that. And redeeming main taggers of the show despite her being Jewish and outwardly called her a fucking creep for allegedly sexualizing the fusions in the show. Yes. Chris mm. uh, and H. Bomber guy just said that uh, some of having a beef with somebody I've never heard of and gender stuff, which I don't really understand. <laughs> I believe that'll I'll leave it to the people who know what they're talking about. Um, I remember Just a Robot did do a video on Lily Star Giant Productions. Didn't that person just get in trouble with Mr. Enter? <laughs> actually, mm. okay. Uh, in 2016, her former friend and fellow YouTuber Josh Scorcher released a video in response to Lily Pete. Uh, oh yeah, I guess. See, when I first heard of Lily, I thought Lily Orchard was a... was like a handle? Because I saw it was Lily Peat before, and I thought peat, like peat moss, like dirt, and now it's Orchid. I thought it was like... I thought it was like a thing. <laughs> I didn't know it was Lily's real name! <laughs> so like when I... I did a joke, I did like a joke YouTube page one time. Uh, actually, let me go find it on my, on my Tumblr. Um... 
We'll just, we'll just fuck around now that we're done with the video. Uh, uh, speaking of my Dragon Age OTP, there they are. Good old Hawk and Fenris. Not my Hawk, though. I have a custom Hawk, but that's default Hawk. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can find it. Of course, all my YouTube shit is on here, but, um, 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 that's my digital circus shit. Ignore that. Uh, <laughs> where is it? Um, here, oh, here it is. Oh, wait, no, that was from, that's the art from it, but that's not the actual thing I'm looking for. Fuck. Um, I think it was, like, fan theories. Um, damn it, I can't find it. Anyway, I did a, <laughs> I did a, I did a whole thing, I did a whole thing where I did, like, a fake YouTube spread with fake YouTubers speculating that if my AU was canon, people would be speculating that Spinel is secretly Pink Diamond. And one of, one of, one of the, one of the, one of the joke YouTubers I did was Poppy Fields. <laughs> It was a joke on Lily Orchard, but I didn't know that was Lily's actual name. I'm not used to people using their real names. <laughs> uh, it wasn't changed because of marriage. The wife took the last name and the name of the person Lily claimed raped. What? I don't know about that. Lily tried to cancel contra points. Tried to start harassment campaign. Oh, good. Oh, good. Big fucking surprise that Lily tried to start a cancel mob against somebody, huh? Ugh. Christ. Ugh. Let's see. Let's see. The, the video was well received. The Lily's reaction only reinforced his claims by calling him malignant human cancer and giving him death threats. Oh, wait, this Josh guy actually, like, did a cease and desist against Lily? Holy shit. This is all this shit I'm not, like, familiar with. Skype logs? Skype logs? How long ago did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Skype was the Discord before Discord, everybody. Uh, let's see. Gaslit and alleged she tried to murder her? Lily said somebody tried to murder her? <laughs> Okay, I, I'm every time I find out more about Lily, I feel less and less bad about making fun of her. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, uh, uh, I didn't find the image. I was looking for it, but I, I didn't find it somewhere on my Tumblr, my fake YouTube spread about people. There would be fan theories that Spinell is, is Pink Diamond if, if my AU is canon. Is it, questions that you mentioned, Ace Bomber Guy Illuminati was one of the channels he mentioned his plagiarism. I was curious how aware you are of the entire mess. Oh, I know, I know. I know. I've been following videos on Illuminati. Uh, she's she's obviously a big piece of shit. Uh, that whole situation is pretty 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 fucking bad. Um, so, and then Essence of Thought, who's mentioned here, Essence of Thought is now um, Essence of Thought was a big Lily fucking critic, but now she went after Evangelita Skov for also talking about Lily Orchard and using the same screenshots. An essence of thought tried to say Vangelita Skov was as bad as Illuminati because she used the same screenshots as, as Essence of Thought. And then Essence of Thought went, well, you should give me 30% of your ad revenue and your Patreon money for using my screenshots. And it's like, are you fucking insane? Like, geez, maybe you cover Lily so much because you're exactly fucking like her. <laughs> Is what I'm starting to see. Is what I'm starting to see here. <laughs> <laughs> Trivia, Lily loves Adagio Dazzle. I have no idea who that is. It looks like there's another Lily face leak there. I'm not gonna show that. Lily start states the reason she hit she has hidden likes and dislikes on her channel is because they're a useless metric. <laughs> Lily claims Native American and ancestry despite not being affiliated with any known indigenous group or tribe and is originally from Halifax. <laughs> yeah, I've said that before. Every Every other white person in the United States and Canada says, Oh, I'm like a hundred I'm like one twenty-fourth Cherokee. I have like mystical native blood in me. And they act like Native Americans like like are a long past thing that don't exist anymore. <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh Yeah, yeah, Evangelina Skov did nothing fucking wrong. Like, okay, you can be annoyed. That Vangelina happened to use the same screenshots as, as you, whatever. Demanding 30% of her income? That is fucking mental. That
That is fucking mental. My favorite has been character. Oh, we know. We know. Obviously, it is Alistair, who I did not expect to like. But here we are. <laughs> I did not expect to like the Tumblr sexy man, but now I am aping his style. <laughs> <laughs> Does Lily show people's faces without permission? I don't know. Lily hasn't seemed to show anybody but celebrities. But. <laughs> it's not a Boston or Brooklyn accent. It is a Rhode Island accent, okay? the Warwick specifically. I've joked about this before. You can tell I'm from Warwick because of how I say Warwick. <laughs> I don't live there anymore, so don't try to dox me. <laughs> but. <laughs> I have uh, I have voice mod. I've been me I've been meaning to use it more, but yeah. The screenshots weren't even essence of thoughts to begin with. Yeah, like I don't even if you took a screenshot, I don't think you can like copyright claim a fucking screenshot of the internet. Come on, you know that's just fucking horseshit. Anyway, I don't think there's anything else that interesting on here. This seems to be a little out of date, saying, like, oh, Lily talks about My Little Pony, even though she hasn't talked about My Little Pony for, like, a fucking year. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Kikurosa. I'm just joking. Like, seriously, everybody from New York and New Jersey and Massachusetts or Rhode Island, we all sound the fucking same. Connecticut's a little, little out of the loop for some reason. <laughs> they don't sound like anything. <laughs> Do a voice that sounds like a bizarro Lily Orchid? A Lily Orchid would just be Ben Shapiro, right? I'm never gonna stop saying you sound like Ben Shapiro, Lily. I'm sorry. <laughs> Essence made another video about Rachel Oates defending Vengeance. I don't know who Rachel Oates is. <laughs> I don't know a lot of drama tubas. Yeah. A Boston accent is more like this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sweats in Connecticut. I see you down there. I see you, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my beach! <laughs> Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island, and um, Massachusetts get along exactly like uh, Ireland, Scotland, and in England. <laughs> for for my Europe European viewers, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I don't follow a lot of drama tubers, to be honest. I follow a lot of streamers. I follow a lot of true crime people. I follow a lot of people who talk about cartoons. Um... So, yeah, I, I, and then I follow, like, CJ the X, who talks about whatever the fuck he feels like at any given time. His recent one was about that old Folgers commercial that was ac accidentally incestual. <laughs> That's a great video. Lily <laughs> Orkin is liberal, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Lily doesn't have anywhere near as big a platform as Ben Shapiro, let's be real. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, they're CJ the X fans. He is so, he is awesome. Everybody go watch CJ the X. He's way better than me. <laughs> He's very experimental. I would call him an Advent Guard experimental YouTuber. That's what I would call him. <laughs> He's great. You were born in Lockport, New York. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least you know where Rhode Island is, Kikukurosai. Everybody's like, you mean Long Island? No, I do not mean Long Island. <laughs> we're we're a real state, you guys. Even if we're really tiny, we're a real state. Uh, you want to see Lily cover Barbie? Oh, fucking Christ! Lily probably wouldn't be able to understand Barbie, even though it's like the most the most obvious metaphors, <laughs> and it's just a fun movie. I don't get people being mad about like the basic feminism 101 and fucking Barbie. <laughs> It's not even that. It's not even that complex. It's not even that hardcore. <laughs> I really hope this article mentions Tumblr and Stockholm. I don't think it mentions Stockholm at all. Um, um, no, because it's trivia. But uh, I will tell you, uh, there is a very good video uh, you can all watch. Um, oh God, what the fuck is this fucking thumbnail I'm getting here? <laughs> Oh yeah, we had we had Monty Xander up earlier. Um what the fuck? Uh what am I looking for? <laughs> Lily Orchard Stockholm. There's a very, very good comprehensive video that has convinced me that Lily did write Stockholm. Not this one, not the essence of thought one. This one. 
by Chubby Checker, which I think is an upload of somebody else's work. But that's okay. I'm gonna put it in the chats, actually. And Barbie is literally Feminism 101, yes. There we go. There we go. It's a very good video. Uh, it's very comprehensive, has a lot of information, has a lot of receipts that show that Lily definitely fucking wrote Stockholm. There, there's just, there's no getting around it. <laughs> there is no getting around That Was that Chris Chan? Probably. <laughs> I follow some Chris Chan stuff sometimes. I'm sorry. Look, listen, listen. You guys weren't there in 2008, okay? <laughs> you don't understand. I wish I could quit Chris. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, Barbie... I liked I liked Barbie because it did kind of approach... It had a good approach. Because on the one side, you have the people saying, of course Barbie is feminist. Barbie has all the jobs, you know? And the Kens are lesser, so that's feminism. And then on the other side, you have the, the girl child, the daughter, saying that... Barbie has put feminism back 50 years. Barbie is a Barbie is a bad image. Barbie is sexist. And in the middle, you just have Barbie, who's just a little doll, and she never asked for all this bullshit to be put on her. <laughs> and I really liked that approach of it, actually. It kind of met in the middle, like, reminding you that, listen, she's just a doll. <laughs> she's just a little dolly. You are imposing these things on her, you know? So I, I really like that a lot. I like I like that angle. And of course Ryan Gosling was absolutely fucking hilarious as Ken. It was it was great. It was so great. <laughs> and that scene of all the Kens having a battle on the beach where it's a bunch of grown men shooting each other with like sticky darts and riding hobby horses. It, God, that scene is like the best thing ever put to cinema. <laughs> it's so good. I don't know, we're talking about the recent Barbie movie, uh, H.J. Face. Um, so... Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's... Oh, are you joking? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, sometimes I do get a little tizzy. I get a little tism. You're Knuff. We're all Knuff. We're all Knuff. But yeah, Ryan Gosling was so good. He was so good. And the Barbie movie had a had a had a whole thing too. We have we have a bunch of adults acting like kind of like children because they're all because they remind you they're all dolls. So of course they kind of have the mentality of like very simple children. <laughs> I really liked that too. I really liked that too. It was it was it was so funny. It was really good. My mom and I went to see it twice together. Uh, <laughs> the girl that calls Barbie a fascist. Yeah, yeah. The the daughter was definitely not supposed to be in the right. I don't think some people understand that. The daughter was making a bit of fun of like the reactionary woke zoomers because there's that scene where the where the the suits are getting Barbie in the back of the van and and the girl is like, uh, oh, they finally caught that nut job. Uh, I mean, reality challenged woman. <laughs> of her a little bit you know we're not supposed to agree with the daughter we're also not supposed to agree with the blind notion that barbie is 100 percent feminist all the time that's the point but yeah that line afterward is the funniest line of the movie where barbie's like she thinks i'm a fascist but i don't control the railroads or the flow of commerce <laughs> oh god i laugh so hard <laughs> she's just sobbing as she says it I love it. <laughs> Hi, for a follow. We were talking about Bobby. It's not weird to use to play with dolls. Toys should be gender neutral. My parents let me play with whatever the fuck I wanted when I was a kid. That's probably why I'm this way. But, like, like my parents were toy collectors. They had a business back in the day, in the 90s. Uh, so, they did a lot of, like, old toy collectible selling. So, I had all the toys I fucking wanted. And I had... Barbies. I had Ninja Turtles. I had My Little Ponies. I had Hot Wheels. I had Legos. I had fucking creepy crawlers. I <laughs> my parents did not restrict what I was allowed to play with because of what's between my legs, you know? And that is how it should be. <laughs> so any kid should be able to play with whatever the fuck they want, and they shouldn't get shit for it. And then their kids were exposed to microchips. Go watch Barbie. It is hilarious. 
I guess you could call me a tomboy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kind of dykey, really. <laughs> Though a lot of my straight aunts are also tomboys, you could say. So, like, yeah, yeah. Do you operate the toy with your genitals? Exactly. That's that chart. Actually, let me find it. <laughs> is this toy for a boy or a girl? I love this. This is this is the perfect answer. A guide to tell whether a toy is for a boy or a girl. Do you operate the toy with your genitalia? If yes, then this toy is not for children. If no, then it is for either girls or boys. <laughs> That's how it should fucking be. <laughs> that is all you need to know. <laughs> we understood this in the 90s. I don't understand why toys have gotten even more segregated now. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like, we were moving away from that in the 90s, and all of a sudden, like, m capitalism came busting in and said, No! The girls must be in the pink ghetto! <laughs> you know? Uh, God, I can't. Uh, anyway, so I should probably wrap up. We're kind of out of things to talk about. I'm just, I'm just rambling about random nonsense now. <laughs> yes, give you a million Legos. I will give you all the Legos in the world. But yes, that, that guide is all you need to know for your Christmas shopping this year, uh, whether a toy is for boys or girls. <laughs> it's very, it's a very simple flowchart. <laughs> anyway, actually, on my way out, I'm going to play the video I played at the beginning of the stream. So everyone who missed that gets to have a little, gets to have a little taste of what I opened the stream with. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and, uh. Yeah, everyone go watch CJ the X after watching this. Goodbye. We're back here again. Lily won't shut her trap. And my subscribers want me to give her some crap. Siester Stream Demon is the bit old. Chat calls it cringe, but I think it's gold. They're hungry for shit talk like never before And who am I to deny that which they call for? If I add my own voice to the jeers and the boos Guess who will be pulling all the views?